So hello everyone. Uh, I, um, I was waiting for uh, our online also to start because this is a hybrid event and this is one of the most exotic places I've been ever hosting an event even though it's connected with the, with the food. Uh, it's really interesting to be in the place where there are so many nice scents coming from the kitchen and uh, those who are hungry, I don't envy you, but those who are online, just to explain, we're in a place where, uh, uh, you know, the, the food happens, where the new professionals are raised. So we have really like, I don't know, what, what is the scent? It's like a, something like a mushroom or like uh, onions? I don't even know, <laughs> but onions, yes. I'm not a food professional. I'm Eva Johansson, and I'm the host of today. I'm a journalist and a climate activist. And today we have a really, really uh, powerful and happy day because after one year of work and uh, seven countries involved, we have created the manifesto, and today we're here to launch it. And we're not doing it in a simple way. We're going to have discussions, uh, facts, and really great presentations because seven partners have been working for one year, as I mentioned, and there are so many facts and figures and so many interesting stories and practical information we want to share today so that we can have a really nice event. In between, we're going to have also uh, some questions. And uh, I will kindly ask you to also join the question part. And also, we're going to have a coffee break in between. And the first part of today, the partners of this event have been working, uh, have been talking and walking together. And this is more of a practical part where we are really happy to finally announce and introduce you to the manifesto, both here uh, with the practitioners uh, gathered here in Riga and those who are watching online. Uh, we are really happy that you have joined us today and uh, hopefully the event will be uh, not only something that enriches you, but also your kitchens with ideas that you can actually share and talk about. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Eva Johansson, and if you have any questions today, raise your hand. Uh, but I would like to start myself with the first question. You will see on the screen, there's a Slido uh, asking, uh, and you have to join with your phones. So take your cell phones, although those who are, are online, please take your phones and try to enter slido.com. Or use this, yes. So everyone is doing that. And please enter the code, uh, which is 32228485. And you'll see um, a question. And it's a simple one. What is the tastiest food product that I know? So for myself, it's mushrooms. This is one of the reasons I started to study biology, because I wanted to, st <laughs> to actually work with mushroom. So let's see what are the answers from you. Parmesan, of course, yum. Bread, fish, basil, garlic, wow. Mango, yes, I was just in the Union Island. There was a mango season. It was incredible. It was just dropping on the floor and everyone was picking it up. It was crazy. Dublin Bay prawns. I had no idea what manchego is. It's a cheese, Spanish cheese, thank you. Chocolate, again, chocolate and parmesan. Okay, gorgonzola. So the cheese is kind of, I see the cheese is in the front line. Parmesan, gorgonzola, manchego. Cho yeah, but of course chocolate, I think, because of the, maybe it's a dark chocolate, let's see. New potatoes, it must be Latvian who wrote that. Because once I was in a Katy Perry concert in Latvia, and when she asked, I think she asked in every concert, what is your favorite food or what's the national food in that country? Of course, Latvian said potatoes. And she started to laugh. She thought it's like a joke. And then all this arena was like in silence. And she's like, are you serious? It's potatoes? And I'm like, yay! So I guess that the new potatoes and the deal is a Latvian. Not only Latvian, I think it's a Baltic Sea region. But just Katy Perry didn't know that. Cherry tomatoes. That's my son's favorite food. Bread. Feta vegan, vegan cheese. Vegan and beef tartar. Never tried that one. Summer tomatoes, yum. Great. Dried fish, it must be some, some Scandinavian. Do yes, onions. I used to hate onions, and now when I'm, I'm, old, I'm, I'm in my late 30s, I love onions. So, silje, <laughs> okay. Nice. Thank you for, uh, for joining. Uh, this is great. Uh, I mean, I don't have, yeah, I kind of already feel that I'm... Uh, introduced by this, so I know more about you. Thank you for joining. Now you know how to use the Slido, you've tried it. We can use it uh, in a further event, so it's really nice um, for joining us. But further on, uh, I would, we have another uh, question. 
on Slido and would like to also fill in the survey. We will maybe look what your answers are to start event and what is the... So what, when I think about reducing waste even more in our kitchen, I feel that give me my superhero cape and I, let's do this. We probably could do it, but I wonder how. It takes a lot of effort. We've done all we can and other. Yes, I don't know what other could be, but let's see. Let's see if, if, if those who are online and here are, uh, are ready to change the system. Because when I was, I'm thinking about zero uh, waste, uh, especially when it comes to food. I've, I've worked with young people mostly in art projects on this issue and uh, they're all ready. So my feel is that the younger generation is really, really capable of changing things. And I, I know that there are no ways back right now, so there are no steps back, we have to go further. So this event and the manifesto, I think, is just a start of some bigger change. And it's amazing that seven countries, I mean, we can really come together and work on things uh, and solve some actual problems and create something enthusiastic as this manifesto. So as you see, everyone, everybody, uh, half of, not half, but yes, the, the most of you are saying that yes, you can do it. We probably could, but I wonder how. That's why we have a manifesto, so we know, we'll know how to do it. And it takes a lot of effort, yes. I see that in my kitchen. I hope to get some inspiration today myself. We've done all we can. There are some pessimistic people in the room. I hope we can change that today. Thank you for joining again. And uh, just... Ah, yes, here, the other questions. We need to talk with people on the ground, okay? <laughs> there must be no waste, sure. I know the Japan, uh, uh, Japanese are really good on that. When I've visited some of the villages, they have 28 uh, recycle bins. Uh, live together with someone who knows how to manage food. Hmm, that's quite romantic. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you for the answers. And I would like to invite uh, on the stage Julia and uh, Eva because they are uh, the souls of the project who are in lots of Zooms and lots of WhatsApp conversations and live conversations about the manifesto and they will do a little introductory. Why are we here? How long it took? How hard it was? And how inspired you are on this? Thank you, Eva. First of all, welcome to you all. I'm super happy to be here today and in general to be a part of this great Taste Zero Waste project, which actually we conducted also for many years and manifesto it's the result uh, of this work. Uh, but firstly, I would like to ask you, do you know how many European citizens cannot afford proper meal every second day? Well, can you imagine that is more than 8% according to Eurostat. Yeah, that's a lot. Especially if we think that even one third of worldly produced food is uh, lost or wasted. We cannot afford that. So what can we do about it? So what can we do about it? Yeah, do you know that uh, even 26% according to United Nations Environmental Programme percent of this all waste coming from Horeca sector. But being a part of the problem gives us a chance to be a part of solution. Yes, so that's why we joined in cross-Baltic uh, team and joined, uh, asked uh, experts and Horeca practitioners to join a project and uh, create a Great Taste Zero Waste Manifesto. And I'm very nervous. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> very strange stage. Usually you're up the stage, but now you're like down, you're like in the theater, uh, amphitheater. It is very strange feeling here, I must say. Yeah, it is. Uh, but uh, so that's why we are here to continue our Great Taste Zero Waste mission and sustainability strategy. Yes, and as prevention is the key. Our goal was to help to uh, raise awareness and disseminate knowledge and provide good practices. And that's why we decided to work on the Great Days Zero Waste Manifesto to provide 10 main guidelines and practical useful tips to kitchen professionals 
that they are able to introduce them in their everyday work. So uh, to make manifesto even more accessible in the future, we will translate it to seven uh, Baltic Sea region countries uh, soon. The seven countries are... So, get ready. So the seven countries are uh, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Poland, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Yes, exciting. Today, you will have an opportunity to discover freshly released manifesto, and we will learn how to untap the waste potential and turn it into tomorrow's resource. And I don't have to highlight that, especially today in the times of crisis, it's a superpower. So, as you mentioned, we are here to learn. We are here to learn more about uh, zero waste approach. And that's why we are here at uh, Restaurant Service School. So thank you very much for hosting us. Uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, we gathered uh, experts and uh, Horekta practitioners from seven Baltic uh, and Nordic countries and Poland. Uh, but the project that is founded by Nordic Council of Ministers would not be possible with the help and support of our other partners. So uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, Danish Embassy, uh, Norwegian Embassy and Swedish Embassy for helping us to create this project. And we are uh, giving you floor again. Yes, thank See you. See you later. <laughs> yes. Um, also, the people who are involved, we just mentioned the countries, are really interesting. I was reading the bios and I must say... Uh, I've chosen some of the people even for interviews because it's so interesting. I'm sure they will share a big part of what they have to say, what their experience is uh, today. But uh, the people are, uh, who are, will be today here, it's really interesting, their experience. And I think these people are really have a lot to say. And today is the floor. And they've been part of this whole project. But the first speaker today will be online. She will join us from Daugopils, which is a city in, uh, in Latvia. And it's a uh, project manager in Green Liberty, which is an environmental organization in Latvia. It's Inga Belosa. And uh, she's an activist when it comes to education and uh, sustainability. And today's presentation she will uh, talk about is about food. I mean, the general facts, why we, why we are here, why we are in this restaurant uh, service school, and uh, why we tackle the food today. So, Inga, I hope you're here and you can join us uh, on the presentation. Okay. Okay. She's not, not, uh, hasn't joined us yet. So, can we continue? Yes, all right. Okay, so uh, I would like to invite uh, next speakers will be Amete Schellerup from uh, God, um, Goferson from Sustainability Consultant in Capital Region of uh, Copenhagen and uh, someone who I got to know over uh, Zoom in a program Zeitgalvis in Latvia, on Latvian television, it's Paola Kapadostrias and she's a board member of European Food Bank Federation and their um, presentation will be the highlighting the problems and telling about why we are here, what are the cons and pros of all this. I would like to give the floor to you. The microphones are here. Yes, please. With the <laughs> it is very strange stage. You must encourage people. This is a really strange place. Uh, yes, with all the scents in the background. Yes, please. Hello, hello. Yes. Oh, hi. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the nice uh, presentation as well. Um, we're all here to talk about food waste. We kind of got that already. And uh, we had a sneak peek in our introduction, but I'm here to tell you more about it. So what is food waste? Believe it or not, it's a very simple question, but I have heard so many different answers to it. So it's good to try to be on the same page. Um, and for that, I picked the definition of the Food and Agriculture Organization that defines food waste as any edible food that is removed from the food and supply chain to be disposed. Um, in other words, is any food that is intended for but not used for human consumption. So everything that is not eaten. As we heard before, one third of all of the food produced in the world goes to waste. 
this is 1.3 billion tons of food. And going back a little bit about poverty and hunger, the food that we throw away could actually feed the whole hungry population in the world. Not just one time, but four times. The food waste that we, the, the food that we waste is also responsible for 10% of the world's CO2 emissions. And this is four times more than the aviation industry. We hear that the aviation industry and, and the environmental issues are, are very much on, on the news, at least in Norway where I come from. Um, we are, um, felt, uh, we're made felt very guilty when we take a flight because it's so bad for the environment. Um, but I really wish there was the same kind of uh, focus on food waste because it's even worse. T take that flight to Mallorca, but please don't waste your food, basically. Um, in the Horeca industry, the hotels, the restaurants, and, and so on, the food waste can be divided in kitchen waste, everything that happens uh, in the backstage, in the back doors, and the plate waste, the waste that is from the consumers. 26%, as it was said before, of all of the food wasted in the world actually comes from the Horeca industry. On. It's on. Yes. Try to see. Yeah. Yes. Tell us more, Meta. Thank you, Paula. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because now that we learned that the Horeca sector is responsible for up to 26%, you said it, and Eva said it, and we are repeating these numbers because they are important. They are important for us to know. Um, and uh, when we look at these numbers, we can uh, look for why these, this food waste occurs. A bit higher in the microphone. Oh, sorry. <laughs> could, could you hear? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, we are looking at the causes of why food waste is happening. Uh, and uh, according to FAO, they have uh, in investigated in, in the reasons. And, and looking at the reasons why food waste uh, occurs is, is important. Because if we look at the causes, that will help us uh, find the solutions to reduce food waste. And according to FAO, most of the food waste is rooted in improper organization and preparation. A few of them I will mention here. Uh, the first one is inadequate forecasting of guests causing overstocking of goods in the restaurants. Then we have the inadequate kitchen and service structure causing inefficiency in the preparation of the foods. Then ignoring trends and customer preferences is also leading uh, to a lack of relevance for the restaurants. And finally, and that is kind of interesting, there is some confusion uh, in understanding the difference between expiration date and preferred consumption date, uh, the two labeling that we have for foods. And this course is quite interesting because uh, it actually helps us find the solution that training at the food academies and making campaigns from the right authorities could actually help remedy the differentiation between the two concepts. Exactly. We actually, all of us here working with the food system, we can be part of this solution. As gastronomy professionals, we have the power to make a difference. We can't be the change. So by planning wisely and practicing rational use of resources, a common ground can be created between staff and guests. By reducing food waste, a professional kitchen can tangibly improve labor efficiency in a workplace, control stock, cut costs, and increase revenue. All of this while still ensuring a good customer experience. Actions preventing food waste are not only cost-oriented, they can be used as the foundation for a profitable, sustainable business model that reduces harmful environmental effects and promotes social responsibility. Yeah. 
So the question is, what is the manifesto actually? What is it that we have been working for since uh, September? The Great Taste Zero Waste Manifesto is a free guide to promote sustainable food culture and provide guidelines, tools, and tips to minimize food waste in professional kitchens. It is designed to help upgrading your professional practices and consists of sector-based advice gathered from experts from the participating countries who all have years of experience from the business. And you are all sitting here in the room today. The manifesto can be found on a web page where you, as a food professional, can seek knowledge and share tips. The secret about the manifesto is that our hope uh, for the future and for the manifesto, and this might seem odd today when we are launching the manifesto, is that in fact we do hope that the manifesto will outlive itself. We hope that reducing food waste becomes a habit of gastronomy professionals so that the sector in this way contributes to a more sustainable food system in the world. But enough about words and theory. Um, let's get our hands dirty. A lot of you here today are used to be in the, in the kitchen and you're here for the dirty details. We want to know what the manifesto is really about. So we'll uh, leave the place for the next speakers. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> let's see what the manifesto is about. Thank you, Mette. Thank you, Paola. And the uh, next speaker is ready. As I mentioned, it's Inga Belosa from uh, a Green Freedom Organization, who is going to join us from Dog Opels. Hello. I hope you hear us. Yes, the floor Hello, is yours. Yes. yes, the floor is yours. Thank we you. have a full house. I can hear you perfectly. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, hello. <laughs> hello. Can you hear me, yes? Yes. Okay. So... Uh, my time is only 15 minutes, so I would like to start right away. Why it is important to tackle food waste? Uh, I would like to set the scene with my short keynote and saying hello. My name is Inga and I represent NGO Green Liberty, where I work with issues about tackling food waste, reducing food waste, and partnering with other organizations to do similar, similar steps like you do in your proposal here. Uh, a lot of data were, uh, were shared already, and I would like to remind you that actually we are not starting from a blank page. Uh, our page is the data that are available on the global situation, and those data tell us a lot of stories and tell us a lot of suggestions. And the first of all, it is that more than one third or 40% of food produced is wasted. I think this is shame of all of us uh, that 2.5 billion tons around the world each year are thrown away and not eaten by us. What does it say? It says that the amount of globally wasted food is enough to feed all the people who are in hunger right at this moment. And that our task to reduce food waste and using the available food more effectively, that could be very uh, great steps to improve food availability and food security in the world. So the whole scene here that I'm giving to you is from the global perspective, though. Uh, if we speak, if we see the, the data of uh, food waste, then I would like to uh, speak about um, impact from higher income countries and lower income countries. And this impact is quite different because the largest amount of consumer food waste is uh, generated in higher income countries and it is connected to post-consumption food waste. With the lower income countries, food is lost in agriculture, distribution, processing and transportation sectors more than post-consumption and it is a huge difference. When we speak about food waste numbers, we always want to see where is our own situation, 
where is our national situation or regional situation is here it is common for all of us as a european situation uh, you see the data that 2.5 billion tons annually of which the poorest regions only 6 to 11 uh, kilograms per inhabitant where in europe the situation with um, kilograms per habitant is much higher and latvian situation as well it says that we are not we are the same uh, developed country as uh, all over the europe and because our numbers are pretty the same about food waste also what is in the most wasted food basket if we see this situation you can figure out that common situation in the world is that we waste a lot of different food and the main food that is wasted is cereals uh, if we speak about types of food i would like to say that we threw a lot uh, away the food that is prepared already and not eaten it means that it should be something connected with the portioning and it should be connected with our appetite measures as well as it was mentioned what is wasted with food waste? It is not only economic possibilities, money that is here uh, seen uh, as the last point. We speak mainly about environmental quality. So because uh, to waste food, it means to waste resources and especially water, energy, materials, land, as well air, air water, soil, climate stability and biodiversity. And in terms of social possibilities, what we may waste is food security, decent work, and well-being, to mention but a few. Then, speaking about the amount, it is a huge amount of food that we waste and we compare with the agricultural land situation. 4.4 uh, million square kilometers of agricultural land and 760 uh, square kilometers of water that are um, used to produce this food that is waste already. It is a huge, huge loss. One of the reasons when we speak about tackling the food waste is to speak about difference in food supply chains. Here, uh, the food supply chain that is very uh, evident in our daily life is global food supply chain. What it means, it means that this supply chain is long and it is globalized and we do not really see uh, uh, the, how the food comes uh, through this, all the supply chain stages. The food is grown in one place, it is produced, processed in another place, it is cooked in another place and then consuming, consumed at home as well. The consumer, in these global food supply chains, the consumer doesn't often doesn't know the producer totally, uh, even not paying so much attention to that, and the producer do not have any idea who their consumer is, and it means that with this gap, we are losing um, food uh, as well. What are the impacts of food waste? If we speak the data and make them visible uh, and make them understandable for all of us, uh, then environmental impacts, climate change and global warming are the most um, that is, it is connected. Uh, and there are several policies that are well known for all of us that are addressing food waste. And I would like to remind you that sustainable development goals with the goal 12, goal 2, goal 13, 14 and 15 are the most connected to tackling food waste. And then it means that we can speak common language and we can speak the same policies and the same goals that are connected to all of us. EU level policies addressing food waste, the main ones, it is towards a circular economy. And in this package, we speak about zero waste program for Europe. And this package, we figure out that uh, food waste is also very relevant. And it is as well the directive that is amending uh, waste, um, how we tackle the waste. And in the, in the whole, here uh, in EU level, we set the goal that food waste should be reduced by to 030 uh, of 15%. 
And this is actually, it makes that the whole situation is set and the scene is set. And now it is up to us to make our own local translations and connections to our um, daily lifestyle or professional lifestyles. Here are some sources uh, that I was using here to set the scene. And I would like to say thank you to all of you for this short attention. Thank you, Inga. Uh, while you're here, maybe some of you have any questions to her from the audience? Good. We have talked uh, a lot about the numbers, uh, about the reasons, and I'm sure we don't need any justification why we're doing this event, why we're doing this initiative. And in Inga's presentation, she uh, mentioned that the most of the waste comes from the cereal, so it's uh, bread. And I'm really interested uh, to hear the presentation uh, from next two speakers. Thank you, Inga, for joining us. I hope you'll stay online as the rest of you. Um, she is working with bread, and uh, she is reducing the bread waste. And I must say, when I, um, for example, last time I visited Berlin, I saved some bread there as well. They have those really nice uh, mobile applications where you can save the food in the end of the day. And usually it is some um, bread, some pastry, and I'm always in the, you know, I don't know what will happen with my uh, weight in the end uh, when I, will, if I will uh, continue to save the bread. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's, that's another story. But the two next speakers will tell more about their uh, practical um, views. And uh, in your hands, you already have the manifesto. On the other side, uh, you see that there are 10 very, very practical uh, points that you can use in your kitchens, either you're professional or not. Um, today, uh, we are uh, launching the manifesto, but the actual, actually, we want to talk not only about these, these facts, and we, I think lots of us already know uh, how we are doing in Europe, uh, in the rich countries, and that we can change things, but actually we want to talk about practical things, and these two people are practitioners. And Philip Lundin is a founder of the CEO of uh, The Waste Kitchen in Stockholm, and uh, turning rescued surplus food from supermarkets and suppliers into delicious meals sold as catering and in restaurants. And the second speaker is Katarzyna Moenarczyk, and uh, she is a co-owner of the circular economy startup Ray Bread, where the bread is a resource uh, using raw materials to create new services and products aiming to minimize the bread waste globally. So she is already solving the problems. Two pr practitioners here. Uh, please welcome on the stage. The microphones are here. I will put them on. Working, working. And after their presentations, feel free to ask questions. Sure. Okay, of course. Thank you. <laughs> so uh, I think that we can introduce ourselves in a way that we hope will be the proof that we are now here uh, thinking that this is a natural environment for us, Philip. Definitely. <laughs> this is the most uh, natural uh, stage we could dream for, like to be in a kitchen. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Because when I think about the zero waste in a business, uh, my first, one of my first uh, uh, thinking uh, in my mind, it's Philip. Uh, because actually, Philip uh, is working on uh, in soup shocket. It's yes. a good pronunciation. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Philip has the idea that it's really changing the world, not only Sweden, I think, because it's really inspirational, to create the first frozen uh, food in uh, Sweden, catering. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it will be kind of a tips uh, today with a 10 guidelines from the Zero Waste, uh, Great Taste Zero Waste Manifesto from us, but mostly Philip will be one of the real proofs that it can happen in practice. And how to top this introduction uh, with uh, Kasia? Well, it's easy because Kasia is even as great or if not greater than me. Uh, yeah. Kasia <laughs> is the founder of Rebread. And uh, what uh, Rebread uh, is uh, doing is many things rethinking and giving new life to uh, old uh, bread. Uh, one thing that you do is new sourdough bread made on 30% rescued bread from the last batch, but also another, uh, all, a lot of other innovative products like uh, new protein sources from this uh, old bread to make uh, alternatives for squid 
and uh, I also got to try in your breakfast place in Krakow uh, some months ago some uh, gin uh, off duty uh, based on uh, rescued bread, which was also really interesting. So uh, yeah, thank a you. lot of uh, cool things from uh, yeah. Kasia. Thank you, thank you, Philip. Uh, for us, uh, it was a challenge to introduce ourselves in a different way. But actually, you know, uh, what we want to have as a key message today, that waste, we want to somehow reframe the waste in your mind. That the great taste can be from zero waste, yeah? So we want to pr uh, actually present the 10 guidelines from the Zero Waste Manifesto, so the meat of all of this content uh, that you can find on the website. And we want to create a kind of a proofs that it can really happen in a practice. So let's go with that. Uh, there are 10 guidelines actually, and we are starting. We're starting, yes. We will be uh, talking through all the guidelines one by one. By one. And this is the first thing that you find when you go into the website, all these guidelines. They are general, uh, and then if you scroll down a bit further, you can find specific, more in-depth guidelines for every specific uh, branch of the professional kitchen. So we have hotels, restaurants, catering. So whichever uh, industry you're working in as a professional uh, uh, kitchen uh, uh, person, you can uh, type that and you will get tailor-made guidelines just for uh, your industry. Um, first guideline is to plan efficient. All these guidelines are to help you reduce your food waste in the kitchen. Plan efficient is maybe the most important uh, guideline for reducing food waste. And uh, it, planning is very uh, broad. Uh, it is everything before you cook. Uh, uh, until after you have served uh, the food to the customers. We have some uh, tools actually also in this website that is free for all of you to download. Uh, two uh, free Excel documents uh, that you find under the... Uh, here, exactly. So uh, the, the, the Excel document, uh, Great Taste Zero Waste Planning Sheet, if you click on that one, you can download it and uh, for free uh, tailor make your own different products that you serve as a catering company or a restaurant. Uh, break them down into different uh, sequence and items, like a wrap maybe has a salad or roasted veggies and stuff like that. And once you have tailor made your different products, uh, you have your Excel document perfect for your uh, kitchen. Then you can just type in the amount of guests for uh, an order uh, on a weekly basis or monthly, and this Excel document will give you an automatic calculation of how much you need to produce, how much you need to buy, and uh, everything like that, so that you don't buy too much, and that you don't cook too much for your customers. Make sure to uh, update this frequently until you feel that you have really had uh, developed a good Excel document. So this is a live Excel document for every time you change your recipes or uh, every time you serve a catering, you see how much is coming back from the catering event. Um, so hopefully this can be a useful tool for your planning uh, in the kitchen. Another uh, thing if we go back to uh, the general guidelines um, about planning is what to do with the leftovers. Because a big part of these 26% of total food waste that uh, we as Horeca uh, industry uh, stands for is from the leftovers after events, uh, if it's a catering company or after uh, lunch or dinner as a restaurant. What to do with these leftovers? Well, have a plan for that before uh, you even have the event, maybe one or two weeks before. Uh, maybe there is a shelter, a church, or any other uh, organization in your local city that uh, already has a system of donating meals. Like my catering company in Stockholm, we have uh, eight uh, organizations that we collaborate with. So if we have an event that is for more than 100 guests, we know that there will be leftovers most likely afterwards. So we give a call to one of the organizations one week before to make them ready uh, so that you're prepared. More information in depth about all this if you click on your different uh, tailor-made uh, industries uh, for sure. 
Then measuring and analyzing your food waste is also uh, essential for knowing if you have any food waste or not. Uh, otherwise, it can easily be that if you throw something, it's, um, it's um, gone and uh, you don't see it, you don't feel it or understand it. So start measuring your food waste is a good uh, start for also making your whole kitchen crew aware. We have another Excel uh, tool about measuring that Jakob in our, in our uh, uh, group uh, of developers uh, uh, developed that you also find under tools. Yeah, and actually, there, uh, we can make a sneak peek because today will be also an online presentation from Orbisk that it's actually measuring and analyzing and it's more like a technology that we can use uh, in a bigger places in Horicon. So this is like a second, uh, second uh, guideline, but let's go farther, the farther, but actually something which is connected already with the things that uh, Philip mentioned about planning, it's uh, designing a smart money. Smart, how to be smart actually, because it's not only about choosing the right ingredients, but it's also about actually uh, thinking about whole system. So if you think, uh, think holistically about designing a menu, uh, let's have the example for, uh, for example of the oatmeal that you actually uh, had the opportunity to, uh, to eat in the restaurant, in my breakfast restaurant. Uh, so, Imagine that you can lower the efficiency, like the, the amount of the power used for creating the perfect oatmeal. How to do this? Uh, in a restaurant, uh, you are using the coffee machines, of course, because everyone needs coffee. So if coffee, it's like it's, if water is boiling constantly during the day, uh, why not to use the boiled water to other things? Like, for example, everyone knows the overnight oatmeal, uh, overnight oats. So why do we uh, not think sometimes about the processes that we can create an overnight oatmeal that can be like lower 20% because this is actually the number that uh, was lowered uh, in the breakfast restaurant about the number amount of the power overnight. So boiled water used for overnight oatmeal and then creating a milk from the nuts that are actually remaining from, uh, uh, for example, uh, baking cookies. Uh, so if you think in a way that the smart money, it's not only using the resources and the ingredients that you have, but also thinking about the processes that you use to this in the kitchen and leftovers that you plan from the very beginning, not that leftovers are already and you are thinking about the magic wand, what to do with them, yeah? So from the very beginning, be smart. So this is like a practical example of the guideline. And of course, it's kind of connected with the fourth one, which is serve reasonable portions. I think it's actually kind of clear what it's all about, reasonable portions. But it's also about measuring and knowing your customers, uh, which amount of exactly part of the money it's exactly eaten. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, one more thing about the uh, design a smart menu. Uh, also is to try to leave some flexibility uh, when you talk to a customer or present it in a restaurant. Uh, just a slight mention that there can be some slight variation to this depending on what we have bought in season or rescued uh, earlier on the, the week. So you have the freedom to make last minute uh, changes. Yeah. Okay, we go to uh, fifth one. Fifth one. Uh, order responsibly. Uh, I would say that's also connected to uh, planning. So uh, if you know how much you uh, have to order from the Excel documents uh, in uh, uh, the first step, uh, you don't buy too much. And also uh, you could uh, try to find the things that are in season. It's also often uh, cheaper, which is nice during these times in uh, uh, increased uh, costs of products. Uh, practice good uh, storage routines. So uh, one thing important to mention here is the FIFO rule. Um, FIFO rule. Uh, maybe uh, most of you have heard about it uh, already, which means uh, first in, first out. Uh, 
label the things that you store so you know uh, what has been there longest and it doesn't become old before you have uh, used it, basically. Yeah. Other things uh, that could be mentioned, how we work in uh, Stockholm, we freeze a lot, but that's because we rescue from supermarkets and have really short lifespan. But it has, it has actually given us a lot of other positive things, like, um, for example, if you buy in season, you could buy much more than what you need and maybe par parboil, vacuum pack and freeze for later, reduce costs, be more sustainable and uh, store more in the freezer. A bit more electricity costs, unfortunately, but uh, it could be also a good way to reduce uh, food waste. And I can build on that uh, about the bread. Uh, when you find out, and we in Rebret we just find out <laughs> uh, exact uh, temperature for the drying uh, stale bread, you can actually preserve it from being spoiled and uh, from being like a waste. And you can then use this dried bread in absolutely amazing uh, ideas so i will make like for you the hunger to go to rebred page and see what we are doing but this is also about the temperature of the processes that you are storing actually the uh, um, the stuff yeah so let's go you to you didn't tell me about this i feel that we should uh, continue over here after the presentation okay, you have to okay, teach okay, me okay, more yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay we will uh, yeah, we, we just started the, the idea of working together actually on this great taste uh, things, but I don't know if Poland and Stockholm, like Poland and, uh, and Sweden can be like closer. Well, there to is each Zoom other. meetings now, <laughs> okay, thanks to yes. Corona. Yeah. And online things. Okay, so let's go to the seventh and eighth, which are actually connected with each other. It's uh, building a, a zero waste culture in the kitchen. Uh, this is something which is actually really personalized into the environment that you are working in. So there is no one tool uh, or rule that you can use because it's about people. So if you know your people and their awareness of the zero waste, what is zero waste for them and what is food waste for them. Paula was like trying to make a description today, definition of the food waste. But if you are asking people about the zero waste or food waste routines in their homes, there is different level of like you know uh, awareness about this. So it's it needs to be personalized the environment to the team, but it can be connected with uh, the whole system, the whole ecosystem around the restaurant or the hotel. So going beyond the kitchen, it's important. It's not only about the food itself and the kitchen. It's about like community around this, about other partners about other companies or in the region, about farmers in the region, and everyone who actually can create a change in making it less waste. So I don't know if you know, maybe you know here, uh, the game uh, The Sims. You remember this game? <laughs> actually, it was like you have some uh, a set of resources that you can use to build your home or to maintain some, some kind of a community. So. If you think about your environment in a way that you know the resources that are in the region and you think that it's not about creating your, for example, your own beverages or your own food or meals yourself only, but with other partners, like creating a hubs, it can be like in, in a circular way. So collaborations. This is something that can be better in fighting the zero waste, like a food waste. So this is like the eighth uh, tip. Uh, and we have the two last ones, actually. Don't they see the screen? It, uh, but we, you, you see those tips on the back of your, uh, um, yes, here, information <laughs> sheets? Yes, here. Yeah, we, we see it here, but there. there. OK. So uh, uh, the, the last uh, two, two tips are communicate and mind the taste. So uh, to start with communicating, it's uh, also very important uh, because uh, sadly, if you do a lot of good stuff, but you don't tell people that you do it in today's society with the social media and stuff, uh, for the value of your company uh, to your customers, it doesn't matter what you do. Of course, it matters to the planet, but uh, uh, what people do doesn't know doesn't really matter uh, in a commercial sense. And actually, let's face it, we are in a climate crisis. And if you start working more sustainable, 
you will get a lot of positive values for your company, maybe increased customer base as well, if you communicate it. Mm -hmm. So communicating can lead to uh, increased sales and better economical situation for your company. Also working with re reducing food waste, um, often needs that you collaborate uh, um, uh, outside of your own company. S because uh, maybe the suppliers that you uh, buy things from has things that they are throwing away all the time. And if you communicate what you are doing, they will know about it. And then they know who to call when they have something that they're going to throw away. Which has been the sense in uh, our operations, where I have run Soup Circuit for eight years in Stockholm. It started out with almost no collaborations, but then uh, uh, constantly uh, posting something on Instagram or Facebook. Uh, now we collaborate with uh, 30 companies, uh, amongst half of them are uh, uh, food waste collaborators. And it's thanks to us communicating what we do. Companies hearing about it, knowing that we do it, and maybe they think that we do it even more than what we do. So uh, they uh, will uh, contact us and then gradually we are doing it more and more. And it's also the same with uh, colleagues in the company that they will also get more and more on board. And, and just before yes, this, yes, I will definitely. make like a, a shift. So uh, if I can ask you a final question, what, is, what was most surprised when it comes to you know, the circular food uh, recipe from the wasted uh, ingredients. What what was most surprised for you when it comes to taste? That you thought that okay, this is a waste uh, food, but actually it's super it's super nice in the taste. Yes. So uh, leading question, but that was the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was the and, surprise uh, and, uh, that they can uh, taste. Definitely. Well. So uh, uh, when we because we rescue things. Uh, even before we start cooking it from supermarkets, uh, one ton every week that would have been thrown away otherwise from two supermarkets in Stockholm. Uh, and uh, uh, what we can see is that a lot of things that we rescue that they would throw away is actually tastier than if you buy it uh, new in the supermarket. For example, uh, meat that has been vacuum packed and uh, been for many weeks in the supermarket uh, that's the nicest meat because it is uh, mature and very tender uh, if it has been in a vacuum seal. And uh, there is many examples like, like this, definitely. Yeah. That, that's why I wanted to ask that this, the last thing, mind the taste. It's about, t a waste can be even better mm. in a taste, yeah? And uh, I think this is the last thing and to make a dot on. <laughs> And I was going to gonna say it can yeah. be worse as well, but uh, but uh, it it can for sure be better also. But just mind it. At mind bed it. stage. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Some quest questions. Questions. More questions. questions. I have a question. I mean. Yes, uh, it's great uh, idea, you know, to call someone uh, after the catering and tell that you're going to have leftovers. But in my experience, last night I was hosting a large event. Lots of people didn't come, so there were lots, lots of food waste. So the caterers, they offered us to take the food with us. And I, I was happy for that, of course, for my kids. I didn't, didn't have to cook. But the thing is, it's always those, uh, you know, the plastics or what about, you know, how to serve that food. Uh, it's also about the sustainability. Is it a plastic? Or what, how do you, for example, if you have a catering, how do you serve the food? You know, how, how do you bring with what packaging? Packaging is the largest problem. That was the first question. And second is my husband re refused to eat that today. And he said it's a leftover. So and the mindset, the second one, how to change the mindset. I mean, it's a big question, but maybe you can try to answer that. First, the packaging and then the mindset. Uh, so uh, the first question uh, about uh, uh, the doggy bags and stuff like that. Um, we, uh, we cannot uh, donate to people in need if the food has been out among guests. Uh, just think about the corona crisis and all the hysteria during that time. It's kind of the same still, but a bit less hyster hysteric, but it makes sense. So the things that has been out among guests, uh, even if it's a large event and there is a lot of uh, food leftovers, we always encourage them to do doggy bags for that. But uh, we try to keep as much as possible uh, inside the kitchen 
uh, so that the things that hasn't been out, we can very donate. Very good tip. It's uh, a very good tip, by yeah. the way. Uh, so, so that's one thing about the planning on site. Um, it's also written if you go, uh, so you don't have to remember it right now. But uh, uh, And the other thing about doggy bags, uh, often uh, events can be in uh, offices where there is a lot of uh, uh, lunch boxes lying around in cupboards, so you can ask them, like, do you have these ones? Uh, or otherwise, if you if they don't have it, uh, offer them to bring your own sustainable uh, one-use uh, boxes, uh, but not in plastic, but in uh, cardboard or some sustainable material. Um, I would say, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So maybe the second question, uh, the second answer. So I think there are two ways. Uh, one, ways uh, one way is a surprise. So why we even like, you know, communicate that it, it is a waste? The, the, the what, word what waste, is, I don't think it's... Like, yeah, what it's... is left over a waste? This is the ingredient that can be uh, used as even a spice for something new. So don't communicate it. It can be controversial, <laughs> but of course, uh, uh, not in a way that someone is like losing some great taste because it's like eating a waste. Yeah. So the communication should be reframed somehow. So this is one thing about changing mindset, uh, uh, showing like really great examples of things that can even taste even better <laughs> than normally, like this meat. Or for example, in rebread we have a bread which is like 30% of flour is uh, um, uh, there is no flour, but there is a crust from the stale bread. And if bread is on sourdough. Uh, we are smiling that uh, this bread is even more sourdoughish <laughs> because you have this 30% crust from the old bread and it's like boosting the taste. So sometimes it's like about the communication. Uh, but another thing is th the mindset. Uh, it's, for example, let's use the phrases which show that we are saving or we are fighting actually um, at the, and minimizing uh, uh, the, the waste, yeah? For example, that the, if you eat this or buy this, you are saving one loaf of bread that can be trashed, yeah? And, uh, and then uh, it can uh, really support the message for the people that can be like really tested, uh, taste, the, uh, test the taste, and, and maybe this will be something that can reframe the mindset. So these two things. Uh, I would like to add also that maybe be a bit patient uh, with uh, your husband or with anyone uh, 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 that uh, like uh, uh, because sometimes it takes time and then also try to make the person think that it's he or she that came to the conclusion themselves that it's not uh, your idea because then they're like oh I you know what I had this uh, new thing that I came up with and then you're gonna be like okay yeah sure but uh, as, as long as they change their minds. So. But I also think you already uh, answered that question because I think what he had in mind is that it was taken out of the plates. You know, but as you said, you don't even put it out. You cannot put that in the dog, doggy box, you call it. So that you are, uh, you are actually, it comes from the kitchen straight, so it's really good. I think the idea of you mentioning the leftover is something that comes from the other people's plate. And I mean, maybe, I'm just explaining. Yes, Maya has a question. Yeah, yeah uh, give it Thank you for your uh, presentation. I'm Maya Kale from Nordic Council of Ministers Office in Latvia. And my question to you both as you work with this uh, topic is, what is the role of youth? So do you see that, that there is uh, some kind of uh, differences in enthusiasm or approach or the mindset? Because uh, at the Nordic Council and also in general, we work a lot with youth. And then the question is, what, what is the role or the importance of young people? And how do you see it? Or have you seen uh, some kind of differences there? Uh, maybe I will start. I, I'm optimistic about this. Uh, because, of course, not everyone in the young generation knows the sustainable development goals <laughs> and other stuff. But actually, I see more and more young people uh, who think about the sustainability, zero waste, less waste as a value. And what I see that there is a trend of having values uh, for the young people. Yeah, they are like stick to some values, some rules. So 
uh, I see more and more young people who are thinking that this kind of a mindset or approach or behavior, it's something trendy, but it's something uh, that can be kind of a, a, a I guess, rule or, uh, or value. So this is what I see around, but of course it's a process, as we mentioned, that uh, we should be patient for this and not in every country, every region on, on, uh, and community is happening. But I'm positive about uh, this uh, kind of a change and, and I hope that, uh, that it will be like matching to more and more people's values. I will add that I was interviewing Paula some while ago and I was asked, when do you start this you know, education on food? And she mentioned, uh, I will just answer in her words, uh, you start in kindergarten. And I think this is where you bring maybe the, prof I mean, we talk about kitchen professionals today mostly. And I think the kitchen professionals in kindergartens and schools would be open, you know, for excursions. Ouch, you know, so many germs coming in. But I mean, at that point, you, you see that... Uh, young generation, they're involved, not to, like you just give someone, like my husband, the package, but you know, they know all the cycle, how it works. For example, I didn't know the fact that you, you're not allowed to, you know, give away food, which has already been on the, on the table. Most of you must already know that, but I didn't. So for me, it's already a new fact. Maybe there are more questions to the experts or some comments you want to make. Great, we have a, oh yeah, <laughs> Liga. Yeah, sure, hi, uh, I'm Liga. I just wanted to ask, often people say, you know, I don't have time for this. So you're obviously very enthusiastic about it. Uh, would you say that, you know, keeping waste in mind and coming up with these practices, like at the end of the day, does it save you time or do you have to kind of put more time into it to, to make sure that, you know, things, things work with less waste? What? Potato, there will be my, uh, you know, example. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, in, uh, in our case, uh, what, uh, what we do is being uh, uh, sustainable in many different ways. Um, so it goes a bit further than just taking care of the leftovers in the kitchen. We go and pick up and we also donate to people in needs and we have to also clean the things from the supermarkets. But all this work takes 60% extra time than uh, uh, time that we don't get paid for. Um, uh, it took seven years for us to find the sustainable business model. Uh, we were losing money during seven years, but the past year we actually found the sustainable business model being fully circular. And that's thanks to uh, freezing almost everything. So we freeze almost everything that we rescue and then we also cook bigger batches and we freeze again. And we are able, because we freeze in a good way, uh, very tight in vacuum packages and uh, uh, defrost it correctly as well, that it almost tastes, uh, uh, mind the taste again. Uh, it uh, has a great taste and you can't uh, feel that it has been uh, frozen. But this increased our efficiency in the kitchen with 100%. So we are uh, now, we have the time to do this. Uh, so it's possible if you rethink how you work in the kitchen. Uh, we also have some comments from online saying that introduce uh, surplus as material for new food is, I think, a key for changing the attitude towards the surplus. So that was a con one comment. And the uh, second one is that uh, uh, I'm looking for more ecological substitute for vacuum packing in foil. In uh, Karminik, we sell some good local seasonal food without preservation, etc. And our experience shows that vacuuming is the best way to keep products fresh. Maybe you or any of the participants heard about available and a reasonable solution. No. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> Not me anyway, but uh, you're, you are drying a lot of uh, things. I actually, um, uh, there was a mention about the resource that can be used another, another time. So, for example, like drying things and using, using uh, like a food, draw food, uh, dry food as a material, for example, for the packaging. It, it's, I know it's possible, even in Rebred we have this 3D printing prototypes of the new things from the stale bread. So uh, I, I don't know like a particular example, uh, but uh, hello to Karmnik, they're from Poland and I support them. So thank you for the question, Karmnik. <laughs> uh, there are two more questions, if you don't mind, I'll ask from online. Uh, one is a really nice one, and now I would like to end, uh, um, 
get the answer myself because I know uh, I've, I've heard a lot from doctors that adults are not supposed to eat too much because we're not growing organisms as uh, um, children and youth, so we should eat less. But the question is, Toby Moore is asking, how to convince people to eat less, to put less on their plate? Uh, don't mind the taste, maybe. Make it less tasty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Small, yes, good, Paula, good, Paula, yeah. So, uh, uh, about the portion, uh, uh, okay, when I don't have a, a good answer, I make a joke, but uh, now uh, Paula helped me. So, so uh, yeah, it's, it's about the proportion of the plates, and also you can think about in uh, uh, buffets to also have smaller uh, cutlery for taking Smart. the food. Smart. Noel, no, why there are small... Okay. Yes, it's, uh, it's not only because they couldn't afford the ingredients, it's because they don't want to, uh, you, 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 you as a guest to uh, take too much also, yes. Yes, Paula, you want to comment? Just want to add, uh, also another thing that I've seen a lot, in, especially in canteens and in uh, hotels, is uh, a challenge for the guests to say, like, please, you know, to serve, you know, a little bit at the time. So it's, rather, it's better that you come back and you serve yourself a bit more rather than you, you know, because when we all go to buffets, we want to try everything. Uh, but that is a really nice challenge. And you can do this through simple nudging on, on, with a sign with some message on, on the counter, for example. Thank you, Paula. And there is another uh, question from Helen, and she's asking, um, in designing a smart menu, I have the problem of creating a boring menu because I'm trying to reduce ingredients and recycling those ingredients. Is there a way to strike a balance here? Uh, but actually, yeah, there was uh, something about the potato today. So if you think about the potato uh, in a old traditional way that, uh, for example, I don't know, my grandmother was, when she was like buying or growing the potatoes, she was having like a tons of different, uh, you know, recipes uh, uh, for what to do with the potato. So actually I think that it can be like, it's not like, the first thing is choose the ingredients that can be really uh, used in a many different ways in the menu. So, for example, for me, potato or bread, this is something that can be really flu uh, uh, flexible uh, because it can be used with many other ingredients, actually. So, it's absolutely not boring to do this, but uh, using only these ones that can be really used in a flexible way. And there are many of them, actually. Yeah, And they are like kind of uh, uh, approachable, so... This is one of the things. For example, we think about the bread, uh, and uh, uh, bread, it can be used in absolutely different ways with other ingredients. So choosing the right ingredients uh, to the, the smart money, I well, think. Uh, also, if you uh, uh, start using the freezer more, you could uh, make big batches of uh, just part of the complete dish, like uh, the sauce base or something like this. And then if you have leftovers from a, a buffet of any root veggies or anything else, you can go to the freezer and combine things in new ways and create a, a lot of new recipes just by four or five different uh, cooking uh, recipes. Yeah. Uh, Mette has a question as well. No, comment. A comment. I would just add, you know, to yeah, use the, the ingredients that could be used in many ways, but also think about how to, uh, to produce it, like using many ways of, of cooking it, like cooking and broiling and roasting. Because, yeah, yeah. So, so, so think, yeah, so because it, it brings a lot of different texture to the dishes and, and makes a, a great variety of, of the, in the menu. More attractive because of the techniques, different techniques, yeah. There's another uh, online question. What are concrete uh, um, end products and uses of the dried veggies? Maybe some inspirational idea. You can name one or two. Dried veggies? Dried veggies? Yes. For the sauces? Uh, let's make a design thing. I don't know, ideation now. Uh, like uh, dry veggies, I think, can be used for the sauces. I know, Kuba, uh, as a chef, I think you can... As like a spice? Yeah. You can make a season to the dish as a kind of spice. You, you can use the dry vegetables as a, a kind of additional thing to the dish, um, changing the textures, soups, sauces. 
even the desserts, you, you can use them many ways. The carrots, dry carrots can be used for the dessert also. So. Yeah. Celeriac and beetroots can be dried a little bit to be uh, getting a, a feeling like meat also. Uh, we, we tried to make our, or, or we are doing our own raisins also on dried uh, uh, grapes. And uh, that's taste almost as uh, white wine, which is really nice. Nice, thank you. Um, so we have already uh, 80 uh, clicks on the new website. So you promoted quite well. Thank you those who are joining online. Great day, zero waste. I was one of those clicks. I checked if it works. Because you already, uh, you mentioned those, uh, you mentioned those practical tips, 10 tips. I wanted to see if it really is there and how I can sign up. Even if I'm not uh, a kitchen professional, and the first thing about dried vegetables was a face mask that I blend or something like that. But I can, I and uh, also you, uh, rest of you can join uh, who are not professionals maybe here today to the manifesto. So let's launch the website. We already did, so it's great taste zero waste, uh, EU. Please go on and you will find that you can join the manifesto. You can sign it, uh, write your email in the comment. And the one really important thing is that you can get a badge, like a sticker that you can put on the doors or uh, wherever you want that everyone knows that uh, you are a sustainable place. Uh, either you are a cooking school or a cafe or a restaurant or whatever. So this is uh, a sign, a uh, quality sign for everyone who is here and who will be introduced with the manifesto and the website. You can use this. So maybe some of you have any questions. Have you tried to join it already? You can try to put your email down and also other things. Maybe something else you want to add about manifesto. Have you already joined it? Ah. Oh. Have you joined it? Yeah, Do you, I, did you see well, the manifesto? Today is the launching, today is the launching day. <laughs> we joined, yes. We joined. Yes, great, great. So you can sign yeah. it, right? Thank you for... Uh, for We're also part of these 18 uh, clicks, I, I think. Yes, yes. I, good, I think good. so. Yeah, I, I, maybe the, the last thing that we can... S because there, there are many keywords like for the professionals, etc. If we were, If we will start from our own mindset in our homes, I, I think... Uh, the change starting uh, from ourselves, it can be a, a, a manifesto also for the homes, not only for the professionals, horeca, restaurants, yeah? Try to do it at home. <laughs> Thank and you. Yes. Okay. Thank you for your answers. We really uh, kind of uh, roasted you a lot on the stage. <laughs> Be you're, you're practitioners, you're practitioners, so people have lots of questions for that. Uh, okay. Uh, if you signed the manifesto, I would like to, again, use the Slido. Please take your phones out. We have a question for you. So the 3222845. And um, if I was to focus on one area to improve first in our kitchen, what would I start with? So you already heard about the planning and efficiency, measuring and analyzing, smart menu design. Well, here, we're already getting the first answers. All right, the, yes, you are also joining the, the poll. Well, actually, when I talk to uh, professionals, uh, as a journalist, they say that they do everything they can with the planning and efficiency because it's, uh, it comes to the budget and economics of the place. So they're always trying to plan as efficient as possible, not because of zero waste, but because of the, of the money and budgeting. Building zero waste culture, measuring, analyzing. Yes, planning and efficiency. Well, we have a lots, of, lots of practical advices on the website. So you're you're really free to, to go on website and check out things when it comes to planning and efficiency. I think some of them are really, most of people maybe know, but some are really interesting tips. So we see the result, yes, the planning is efficiency and building zero waste culture. Well, it's about the mindset, the change, I guess. Okay, smart menu design, I think you broadcasted that really well. <laughs> so people will try to do that as well. Thank you. Good, then we will know that uh, which are the parts of the manifesto and website you will be checking out. Okay. Uh, maybe there are some questions before uh, we end the first part or uh, comments. 
Okay, super. So we can join the manifesto. We've launched it officially. Uh, everyone online, you're free to join it. Please do. And if you have any questions, please please uh, chat uh, chat in the online box. We will answer that. And now we are free. Uh, we are going out for the fresh of, uh, bunch of air and uh, for the coffee break. And we'll uh, see you back at 3:40 uh, p.m. So it's uh, less than half an hour, 25 minutes. Hello, good to have you all back. Um, hope you had a good uh, coffee break. Um, hello, those online. I'm Eva Johansson, and we are continuing our uh, manifesto launch event, Great Taste, Zero Waste. And uh, I hope you signed the manifesto. Who did sign the manifesto? Great. So <laughs> lots of you have a, you can still uh, add your name and email and to get the all the possible information on this. Uh, we are continuing the event and I'm very happy and pleased to really go to the practical part, which will be the panel discussion. And I would like to invite panelists joining me here. We have a couple of microphones. Those who are uh, here, I know that, yes, you can just join and then I will introduce uh, to you. We have a really great panel with practitioners and people who are into depth of food. Uh, and talking on the social media, uh, uh, Philip already mentioned about uh, that we should really um, involve more of this in our social media content. And I must say that looking at uh, the facts and data, the social media uh, number of, uh, one topic is foods, uh, how we do it, how we create the food. So I'm very happy to see practitioners here. I will also sit down. Uh, and I would like to introduce you with those who are in the panel. We have a great panel here, and uh, Eileen Collat on my right. Uh, she is an uh, environmental activist, and she's a journalist. She's been working in this project, and uh, she, in everyday life, she actually creates um, stories and presentations on how you can do um, events, public events, uh, it can, uh, environmentally friendly, which also, I guess, includes a lot of uh, food part, like, and drinks and uh, packaging and all that. Um, I will also have Stella uh, Kurik with me, uh, and she is the part of the Estonian Chef Association and chef at uh, Fotografiska restaurant in Tallinn. Maybe uh, some of you have been in there from the audience. Well, you've been in the museum, I guess, and then she is the one who is behind, uh, behind the bars. Um, then we have Jakub Emanuel Malek, and he's a food waste manager in Zhavka Group and former executive chef and food waste consultant in Accor Invest. Hello. Uh, we already met you in the first part uh, where you were uh, commenting. Uh, and uh, we have also Svetlana Ryskova. She's a very well-known Latvian chef. Uh, uh, she's been in lots of TV programs commenting on all kinds of issues. And I know that she's also uh, loving environment and, and she's environmentally friendly. And uh, Nils Gevele from here, also a chef, uh, who also thinks about how to talk and educate um, uh, on the food. Uh, before we start, we just had a great coffee break with the uh, snacks. Maybe you can explain us what was there. Was it um, surplus something or it was just newly freshly made? Uh, there was some things that we used that are uh, online for us. The only way to find them. Uh, do we have a uh, microphone on? Yes. Sorry. Yes. So, yes. From the beginning. Yes. Yeah? Nils. <laughs> okay. There were some things that we used from leftovers, uh, like uh, we have this uh, potato donut that has some le leftover potatoes that you can always use for a dough. Uh, that went together with uh, forale, with trout, and dill, uh, dill aioli. Uh, game tartar together with uh, parmesan cream. Parmesan cre cream is made from scratch. Uh, as well, uh, uh, this mushroom tartar, uh, basket. Uh, who only use talks from the mushroom, so the other thing that's more beautiful goes to the a la carte. Uh, Volovan, cheese, goat cheese, uh, mousse, with some beetroots, roast beef, uh, with uh, cream and uh, bread that we make here on place, and uh, some sturgeon with dill cream. That's Thank you. It. That was a long list. It is. And I noticed that there were enough for everyone, and I don't think there was any anything left on the on the on the table. We have some uh, left, but uh, it's yeah, for later. But only few. Okay, I think yeah, that was one, one of the first tips you gave. Don't make it too much. So uh, I think you are taking that into account. Thank you. 
Yes, uh, so let's start the discussion uh, on the zero waste. What can we do practically in the kitchen? And as a journalist, I talk, to, talk about this issue a lot. And I wanted to make a documentary with a chef who could create, uh, you know, recreate and tell how you can do these things in, in, in Latvia and uh, how you start from the scratch. Maybe there are laboratories involved, composting, etc., and uh, all this educational part. And you cannot imagine how hard it was to find someone to speak on this because they say, well, we do a little bit, but then it's, you know, not economically, you know, um, good for us and budgeting, etc. There were so many reasons that uh, they were refusing me an interview. In the end, I found Eric Dreibans, thank, uh, thanks to him, and uh, Paula was an expert in that episode. But uh, so, and I was thinking, is it really so expensive or so, you know, is, is so much money involved in that to start this? Because in my head, it, it's not, but of course, I'm not a kitchen professional. So maybe we would start with uh, Stella and Jakub. Uh, so when it comes to the zero waste ideas in the kitchen, does it cost a lot or to start it, it costs a lot. Maybe the investment uh, pays back later. Yes. Uh, no, I think that uh, the more you use the products and the more you, uh, you don't throw it away, uh, then more than uh, you don't have so, so much money uh, spending as spends as you, you can, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> not really, uh, really uh, used to the public uh, presentations. Um, I think that you can save the money, uh, the more product, product that you, you use. So I don't understand why people are throwing them away and why the, this is mindset to throw the uh, products away or, uh, or the, you, that you have the leftovers. Yes, I, I heard something that there should be maybe some laboratory or some more compost place or something like that. That's why it involves more kind of uh, infrastructure and all of that. But I see you want to answer that. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to say it. It's like also like for the composting. Is that the more uh, the better it is if you don't have any waste to even to uh, produce compost. I mean, you you can use the all of the product, not to, even to make the compost. Sure. Uh, so I think it's not about the spending money, it's saving money. Because uh, not throwing away the food is saving money, so I don't see the actually spending. Maybe on some level when you want to really deep dive to the problem, you need to invest in some tools which will be most probably presented next, uh, like Orbisk. Uh, but um, on the beginning it's not. It's only investment you need to do, it's maybe some time. Uh, for sure the engagement of the team and uh, Yes, and determination. I think this, this is a crucial to change the mentality of the people and to make the face first step. You don't need any money, actually. Yeah, well, Philip mentioned it takes 60% of work added to, you know, to... This organize. is what I said. The only investment you, you, you need to do is uh, time. But... Uh, time is money. On the end, it's money, but, uh, but it's not something that you spend. Uh, I mean, you can take the part of your normal working hours just to make the analysis of what you're throwing away. Normally you should do that as a chef and this is normal. Your working hours is also analyzing what you throw away. So I think it's not uh, um, extra money that you need to spend. It's just to have the more engagement and uh, more uh, determination to do, uh, to do it. Okay, but maybe there are some practical tips when you, where you start. For example, someone's watching now and thinking about, okay, I would, would like to start this at least step by step. What would be the first step, you know? The first practical step always is it's, uh, it's, uh, measuring. I think this is the, the first step that each chef should do is to find out where is the actually problem in his kitchen. So if it's in area of the production or the, the portion size, or the planning, or the or the how you keep the products. So I think there are many ways to start. I think the best one is to say, for example, I see in my bean a lot of bread that is thrown away. So I just tackle one problem and say, okay, I will focus this month on bread. I will do the bread analysis, what is thrown away, how I cook it, maybe I cook too much, I bake too much, uh, maybe I can uh, use some, some things that would not serve. Uh, like Philip mentioned, so so there are many ways, but I think first it should just focus on one thing, not trying to catch all the kitchen, all the waste, 
um, unless you have budget and you you want to do it uh, uh, with the tools. Yeah, this you might do, but this is costly. I think also the first step is to sign the manifesto, open the website, great yeah, taste, zero waste. <laughs> this is the best start that you can do. It's just uh, sign the manifesto and go through the, our guidelines. And uh, and I think this is a great start. And if, uh, if uh, you can do it, great. Yes, thank you. And I think it's it's time to, yes, the, the website is launched. Now I think everyone can join and see those practical tips. I, I saw you nogging. Maybe you want to add something to that uh, on this cost side as a practitioner in your kitchen. I can share my experience how I started. It was uh, 2012, I think. Uh, so I met uh, Matthias Dahlgren, Swedish chef on the Lyon uh, Sira in the Bocuse door. And I asked to come to uh, for practice. So I went there after, I remember, three weeks maybe. And then I saw the first step was how they separate the waste. And then I started to think about that because uh, I also thought it is so complicated. And I worked in a restaurant in a hotel. I had 25 uh, people in my team, which was many, and also 25 uh, waiters. And then the, it was 120 people staff all together. So I thought how to do. But uh, I was there for three weeks, and then I saw it every day, how easy it is. So I just uh, made the pictures step by step, how they practically do it. Nobody suffered from that. And I came, I made a meeting uh, in a conference room for my team, and I explained step by step that we are now working like this. It will be a little bit, maybe, yes, investment during uh, speaking about the investment. So that's a time to plan. That's a time for meeting. So as an exec executive chef, I changed the menu a little, not very much, but a little to plan that if we cut something, so we use these cuts for the other dish, etc., etc. So that was my task. Calculations and everything. Then uh, I made a meeting. And then, of course, I went to my GM and I said that I would like to do that. I, I promised and in the restaurant everything will be now different. But... I need some budget for different um, uh, color this um, garbage bins to separate. I need some budget for to put on the table the containers for small separation and uh, for some extra hours to teach the, the stuff and also for uh, changing a little bit the menu, which is printing. We printed the menu in the printing house, so it costs money, etc. And then actually maybe two, three weeks uh, uh, was a little bit complicated, but actually the team was so motivated and they saw my pictures on the big screen and I didn't see any person who was unlucky. They were just a little bit serious, let's say, how to, how to do. And then uh, as we had many trainees, so uh, every period we had at least five, six persons from the school, young generation. Every time the new period of the, the contract for the school start, it was a little bit work for us to explain those newcomers because they don't know how to do, they never saw it. So we again teach them. Everything was by colors. So the, I, I think many people know the system, yeah? So minimum words, uh, maximum visual, uh, very easy explanation, then it works. If you start to say the lection of half an hour individually to, to the person, so I don't think, at least in our mentality, it is quite complicated. And then uh, going to deeper in the, um, how to say, next level, uh, the compost machine, which I didn't have, I didn't know that time about existing of the compost machine, but I knew that uh, there is a machine of uh, compressing the food waste and also uh, com uh, pressing of the carton. So we uh, had such a machines, which is that you save the place of storing all this. Uh, you can give the waste uh, not every day, but uh, uh, less times per week, uh, which is again save money. So if you separate the garbage, then you make, uh, there was a garbage only from the restaurant back from the guests. There was not separated. That was the only bin, which was uh, really, uh, for quite a big price to, to, to give back to the company. That's it, yeah. So that was our 
our experience and of course there is an investment of some proper containers, proper equipment in the beginning. The visual part. Yes, yeah, yeah. but then if you count uh, by the owner or if you count as an executive chef of the big uh, company or chain to your uh, to your bosses, yeah, then uh, you can just show how many months or years you need for giving, getting back uh, all the investments, especially now the energy costs much more than in my 2012 when I started, so that was my... I heard about that it's a lot about team and teamwork and educating team. Nils, what is your comment? Maybe, maybe some practical tips from your kitchen that you use for less waste? We have pretty much. Uh, I start with planning the menu. The big game changer for me uh, was to take one vegetable and work it so many ways that we can uh, be pretty creative. So uh, even we, you talked about potatoes, we can make potato in five different ways and apply that in dish. Uh, that was pretty good thing. And no, it's more about experimenting. It's than, more yeah. about experimenting. Uh, as well, this goes together with competing scene uh, because uh, the chefs that are uh, looking at you, they see your creative ideas uh, to work with one product in two or three ways. Uh, most practical way would be to really pay attention to the product because uh, product in a in a the hands of a chef is uh, pretty phenomenal. So you can do whatever, uh, <laughs> really. Sometimes it goes in wrong ways, but experimenting and doing and trying do, does the most. Uh, things for the chefs, cooks, will be hold your garbage in visible place because you see how much you use in a day, in an hour, in a few hours, and uh, how you mix it together. And even for the competition, it's, it was always having a box. And uh, going, uh, I was in Italy a few, few months ago, and they have very much of them. So the first time I see so many garbage containers. In some other countries, it, you see them less. But uh, so see your garbage. Yes. Really, really look at it. <laughs> that works in my household as well, to be honest. Mm. Yeah. It works better when you don't put it in one place, right? So uh, uh, try to learn different alternatives uh, about using uh, things, products, even like we use this disinfection as spurt, and I was uh, mind blown when I was in Fotografiska, and as well when I met uh, uh, from Nola, chef, uh, they use uh, acid together with water to clean the surfaces, am I right? Yeah, it's cheaper. The surface smells way more better. Yeah, and uh, you don't get um, so many money to spend. Yeah, so basically you save money rather than yeah. spend what we just had a conversation about. Yes, that's a very good point. Uh, yeah, that does the most. Maybe some questions. Great, okay. thank you. Yes, I was thinking about you. you I was uh, actually my next question was about what are your inspirations on this as a chef, where you look for information like Instagram or I don't know some conventions or on seminars. But you just mentioned something that uh, if you see it in Italy, the waste garbage is something uninspired, uninspired, inspirable, but also works. Maybe uh, any of you practitioners could mention some good examples of inspiration where you get it from. Like, I like this part of uh, competing and experimenting, but I guess, where is, I mean, I look at Netflix and get my ideas where I, you know, for cooking. Where are ideas you get from for, for zero waste ideas? You, maybe some accounts or films or? Uh, for me, it's, uh, I met the chef of the Silo restaurant, London, mm -hmm. and uh, they don't have any trash bins in, uh, in the restaurant at uh, all. At all. And, and yeah, it's like, a, it's a hard work and uh, the chef told also like it's lots, was, lots of years of failure uh, and uh, finally they have reached it, the point they don't have to, uh, any yeah, trash bins and uh, then they're using the plastic, uh, even if it comes to the restaurant, they use it for the, uh, making now knives from the handles uh, of the knives from that and uh, they try to use everything what is co coming into the restaurant. They also give up the compost machine. They have their own land. They, uh, they're putting the compost over there, not using the electricity so much. 
I would like to add also that in this manifesto website, it's also open to everyone for ideas or stories like this, or maybe some small tips that you've found out. So maybe this website could be, uh, you know, inspirational base for, uh, for, uh, for uh, professionals in the kitchens where you can look up for, I don't know, what to do with the fish head. I don't know, boil and, something. And also, I would like to add that uh, also the fermentation things are really interesting and it's coming more popular that we don't uh, need to think about only the fermented cabbage or uh, like sauerkraut or uh, kimchi, but uh, to think more uh, wider that you can ferment lots, lots of more things. Not the only to try, but also ferment. Good bacteria that we're talking yes. these days. The bacteria bars. I've, I've been to one bacteria bar in Berlin. It was amazing. Yes. You want to add something? Where do you get inspiration <laughs> from? Always I can add something. No, I think the, in general the social media helps to, to spread the, the, the different uh, ideas that you can use. I think the common life that gives you sometimes a tip that you don't expect it to... The, for sure, what uh, what Shah said uh, that uh, to experiment, to check what are the ways you can uh, use the products uh, differently. So, so I think this is all. Uh, and for sure, uh, manifesto is one of them. So I encourage you to sign up the manifesto, and uh, b because there there is a lot of uh, inspiration there. So, so please sign up. Yeah, it's a nice platform or a base, I exactly. think, that we're not alone in this. <laughs> I mean, uh, we are in this uh, challenging world where we need to uh, see, uh, contact the climate change. And I think there are no steps back, as we mentioned. And, and it's nice to have a platform where we all involve. Elin has been uh, active in the uh, field of educating, educating people on uh, event planning and organizing which less waste. Um, and I was thinking, now is the warm season coming up in Latvia, and we have lots of catering, festivals, uh, I don't know, parties, uh, picnics uh, outside in parks, etc., etc. Maybe you have uh, tips or ideas, or do you think it can work outside? Because, I mean, packaging, you always have to think about picnics and all that. The professionals, how you bring out the food so it's safe to eat, looks nice, etc. Uh, well, first of all, uh, we have to understand that event organizers, uh, event organizers, it's very, very important for them to reduce the food waste. Otherwise, the food waste is very heavy. It's so much, and it's not for free to get uh, rid of them. And and uh, it's just uh, living money. Uh, therefore, it's important for them when they uh, con uh, arrange the event, when when they contact the caterers. Uh, to first of all uh, tell them everything they know about the venue. Will there be tables or not? Uh, will people be able to uh, sit down and eat or not? Because uh, based on that, uh, the caterer can uh, make the menu choices. They can design a smart menu, as we know we have to do. Uh, they have to know uh, if there will be I don't know, one hour for eating or people will eat uh, for whole day uh, gradually. And these are the things they have to know. They have to know who else will be there, what uh, others will serve, say they, so they don't serve uh, the same. For example, in this event, uh, the food was uh, really proper, uh, small pieces because there are not no really places where to sit down and cut the, the steak or fish. So it's it's absolutely okay, and and we saw it. The table was uh, empty in the end, uh, so it, it was uh, really smart. good and smart planning. Yes, so I. I for events, that's the most important part, is this uh, planning and uh, co-working together with the event organizer. And in the end, event organizer is winning because uh, they don't have to deal with that huge pile of food waste. And I believe that any caterer, any kitchen professional feels really sad uh, to see that the thing you worked on, the food, is somewhere in the trash. Uh, that's not cool. So your key would be the communication before a prior event yes. to understand really and to speak with the client on, okay. Exactly. 
Great. Uh, there is also a question from online uh, asking, we have m many questions, but I'll ask one. Uh, how we can start educating people that um, is left over is not something less value, even terminology should be rewritten, that something more is not something that give value. Well, we kind of tackled this in the first part, maybe, uh, you know, not saying waste, but surplus. And we actually agreed in the coffee break that not many people know what surplus is. So the explanation may be that we need to bring this term in, uh, in, in, you know, in professionals' uh, mouth so they can speak in interviews. Um, but maybe you have uh, advice on this, how we can educate people. Actually, I, I have a comment on this. We, maybe we shouldn't exaggerate so much that, hey, this is a surplus food, look at this surplus. Because obviously many people have uh, stereotypes uh, against that. And, uh, if they don't know that this was a surplus potato from yesterday, and if the food is tasty, uh, let it be. Well, it's may maybe this way is fine. Uh, until the food, uh, as long as the food is uh, good, uh, are people really interested where the potato came from? Well, depends, I guess. But yes, sure about this educational part. Maybe you have some good examples or, or stories from personal experience. Uh, I work with students. Uh, in my team, we have like all this before me is three years in a cooking. Uh, other ones are two and one year old. Uh, so the thing I do is when I see some, somebody throwing something out, I uh, you, you, st you stay near the, the bin. <laughs> I, uh, I live by the bin. <laughs> uh, no, uh, but uh, I ask him to take it out uh, to maybe weight it and to see in uh, papers how much cost it was in the uh, start. Okay. So okay. even if it was just cucumber peels, uh, they throw them out, it's like 10% of cucumber. But if you got like 100 cucumbers in your restaurant, you can make some nice things out of it. And uh, that's the way I try to communicate with students to see that in that way. Because if I have this question, if you had a restaurant, uh, would you be happy of somebody throwing out uh, this much of your money? Yeah. Well, for me, for example, w what worked for me uh, was um, that uh, in Barn Spectacle Festival in, Bar in Kirkenes in Norway, I was there a couple of years ago. And uh, I remember that they were cooking the, you know, there are lots of artists coming to the festival. And it's a big venue, and usually there are, I don't know, 20 or 30 artists working for a week. So it's a lot of food, lots of cooking. And what they did, they invited a French chef who was cooking from, um, I think the, the store was throwing out like bananas and everything else. And they were just improvising and, and cooking. And that French chef was so good. I remember we were eating those things, and it was incredible. And that was the first time for me to understand that, let's say, the surplus or waste or whatever we call it, is amazing if you give it to like the French chef who knows what to do with it. So I think for me, that was like a click personally that I understood that. And I, I brought this idea back to Latvia and said like, we, need, we should do that in our festivals, you know, offer those, you know, possibilities. I have to share our experience of the Latvian Chef Club. We are organizing such a chef competition. Uh, we started in 2019 before COVID. That was the first one. It was for, uh, and it, it is for uh, Baltic uh, students, for Baltic schools. The idea came actually from uh, European um, countries, uh, the, the meeting of European countries sharing with uh, their experience. And the idea, first what I saw on the stage on 2018 on this meeting was that uh, um, in Germany they make the master classes. Then one chef is cooking and the other chef is trying to use everything what is uh, leftovers from the, from the food. Yeah, then uh, we decided to make such a competition uh, for students, especially because they are the new generation. They didn't start to work in the restaurants and they are just starting and they starting to think proper, right? Proper way. So uh, our uh, concept is that um, two students in a team uh, cooking six portions of the main course. Uh, from the black box, what we give them one week before the competition, just to not be so stressed because they are young, so a little bit prepared. So then 
they uh, have in a team the teacher from the same school, which is coming as a Baltic, so they sometimes come also from abroad because we organize it in Latvia for now. So, and then the teacher uh, stands next to them and they, uh, the teacher has to decide how to use maximum of the leftovers for the appetizer. And then in the end of the competition, they serve uh, six plates of the main course and six plates of the appetizer from the same task of the black box. And then we we'll weight the waste. And uh, we put in a points the percentage of the food waste and uh, then all the criteria. Of course, the taste is the, the, the most important. That's always 50% of the result. Then, of course, this visual and um, uh, hygiene, of course, also, which is very important. And this year we will organize again the same competition. And we added to the rules now not only food waste uh, measuring and uh, this idea of the cooking, but also the minimizing of the plastic. Because uh, three, three days ago, right, uh, in this room was uh, Albert uh, French Sinner from uh, uh, Finland, from restaurant Nola. And uh, if, uh, me personally, if I was thinking about the food waste separation, all these things so much, so many years, I never actually thought about, imagine not to use plastic uh, clean film. For me, it was a little bit, he doesn't use plastic clean film, never ever in the professional kitchen. And I was asking two days of them because we made the preparation, we had very long time together, it was, became friends, so, and I asked, okay, if you put in a fridge, how do you store it? He said, that's a, um, a hard plastic container. Okay, then I said, but how do you freeze? Because usually if you don't put in a plastic, it's a, yeah, it's a way of thinking. It's so common to make such a, yeah, such a moves in the kitchen. It's very automatical for me, for many, I think for every chef, right? So we vacuum, we use the plastic film. It's always like a habit. So he said that imagine the big plastic film costs now around 50 euro per, per piece. So how much do you save the money? And we, for freezing, we use the containers who are pushing out the, um, the air. Yeah, so like this, yeah. In Latvia, nobody do like this, yeah. So at least I didn't see any, uh, so, yeah, yeah. So which is, and they uh, only have the, um, beans for some glass and they have the beans for some metallic uh, cans which is sometimes yeah but they don't have the plastic beans so we added this topic to this year competition we will see how the students and the teachers of course how they are uh, uh, successful with uh, this topic it will be even more complicated rules for the competition Svetlana, i'm inviting you to add that idea to the website because okay. obviously not everyone knows it it's it's great i think these little things, and uh, I was just thinking, you mentioned the change, the previous change you mentioned well, took like two, three weeks, it's hard. But I mean, uh, in theory, we know every change is hard, I don't know, but then maybe it's a short period and it gets uh, better. Um, but if you start with a student, uh, usually when you are young, it's not so uh, complicated to take the changes as the my age, for example. So that's why we started with the very beginning with the students too give them a motivation to think like this. That's the most important, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I was thinking that zero waste has been there for a while and zero waste uh, food uh, ideas are there, uh, especially in Scandinavia, in, in Baltics, in Poland. It's kind of a trend, but now it seems it takes really concrete steps. For example, this project, you know, and I was thinking um, philosophically, it, is it really something, what future steps this will take? We start with Manifesto, we start with this platform, we start with gathering together, um, gathering together the chefs. What do you think, is it a trend or it will continue? Because it's saving money, it's good for environment, maybe it gets some funds from, I don't know, from institutions? Would be nice. Sorry, yeah. Jakub. I think there is no other way than just start to act because there is no time. We know that the climate is changing, the, the cost of the food is growing all the time. So, so we should start now and this trend should not be just a trend or mainstream. It should be the, the common habit that you wake up each day and you think about the ways that you produce and so on. And you make the actions to avoid it. 
I think the great starting point is to sign up the manifesto and and uh, you know start to make this change happening. So. Yes, thank you. But I was also thinking, maybe Elina, you work more with communication, how we can communicate this platform. We have this launch event and we will have some definitely press information. But what do you think, what are the best ways to, to you know, spread the information among professionals, but also maybe the common people too? Wow, well, now you want me to make a, a PR plan. Me media yes. plan. Wow. Uh, well, maybe some one idea could be good that we could, uh, after this event, organizers, uh, or you or me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the thing is that uh, I see that food waste uh, is a big problem for, for events, for uh, restaurants, hotels, retailers. Uh, they uh, have not been talking about that maybe five, seven years ago, and then they said that we don't have any food waste at all because they were ashamed of that because food waste is like the worst thing you can have. Uh, y yes, come on, we have experienced war, we never, we never waste any food and that now they admit that, oh yes, uh, we do, but we are working on that. Uh, so now, now at least we admit that we have food waste, which is good, uh, but uh, now we have very much information on what to do at our homes. What are the tips and tricks? How can you freeze a banana and eat after uh, like an ice cream and so on? But uh, seriously, for, for uh, professionals, I don't think that there have been, at least in, in uh, Baltics, that there have been any s a guidebook or a student's book on this particular topic for maybe uh, you can uh, correct me if, if i'm uh, wrong but for example Svetlana for new, says you're right yeah for, for for example for new students on this big topic there is no such thing as a student's book so you can use this manifesto the tips in it maybe as a base for a student's book good idea so maybe Svetlana or Nils can write a book taking this into the base. <laughs> you, you don't have to write much. It's, it's yeah, just uh, there. put your just name on. Just sign up the uh, manifesto yes. and it's there. Okay, uh, comment from Svetlana? Yeah, so um, yesterday we had a very nice webinar where three chefs, uh, Justinas uh, from Lithuania, which uh, he is here today, and uh, Peter Pichil from uh, Fotografiska and me, and we had actually three presentations, which are now the uh, video... Uh, we have the video format, yeah, so we actually use, uh, we can use also that because I was preparing mostly for the equipment as I am now working with uh, in a company which makes the projects and, uh, and sells equipment, different kind of uh, the same compost machine. I was gathering uh, last month everything what I can find and asking many chefs and uh, also Albert was my very good experience. So, and then... Uh, the other point is uh, speaking about the schools as I was taking part into the last uh, changes of the program for the professional schools of our profession of the chef that uh, there are models and actually uh, the ministry has to initiate to change that a little bit and add a model of the sustainability. Because I know, I, I am sure, because I was correcting all the models, I was not writing them, but my task was co to correct. There is nothing about this, the sustainability. If you would like, really like an action, not like just speaking, to change a little, we have to do this, uh, yeah, like I think it's a really good yeah. idea. Okay, thank you. Our time is out. Thank you for joining uh, the panel. I would like to sum up some ideas. So starting with that, that you know, going zero waste in a professional kitchen is a teamwork, and it's also about education. The good tip is to use visualizations to, to create the zero waste environment in the kitchen. Uh, it doesn't cost uh, extra money if you are creative. Um, another advice is to experiment. Um, and... Uh, Another, uh, the, the, yes, uh, to create a smart menu and communicate when it comes to the outdoors and uh, catering. Uh, hold garbage in the vi uh, visible place and maybe stand <laughs> beside it. Um, and change is hard for a short period, but it comes with a good result. 
uh, and also create uh, educational material that is used for students. Thank you so much. 40 minutes, a lot of good ideas. Thank you, the panelists. Uh, applause. <laughs> and, um, Uh, so, in next we have some more practical ideas and keynotes, and the next speaker um, is going to uh, talk about uh, her work and what she does, uh, and about the future of the food, let's say, and it's a senior project uh, manager at EIT Foods, and it's uh, Eva Arjeskova, come on, on the stage, and uh, she will tell about, yes, uh, smart solutions technology, what we can use, not only those tips. Thank you, Eva. First of all, it's maybe not my work because I'm representing EIT Food and we are uh, the world's biggest uh, food innovation community, which uh, uh, like uh, gathers uh, many partners and uh, different stakeholders, and I will talk about it a little bit in a minute, but thank you for that. I'm Ewa Rzeszowska, uh, and uh, just uh, reflecting on today, uh, you had opportunity to see that uh, one of the main guidelines in our manifesto is to go beyond the kitchen. Because indeed, we need to find allies in this uh, reduction of food waste battle. We cannot do anything like a bit, make a big impact alone. So yes, how to do that, what is going on, what are the organizations, uh, what are the innovation solutions that you can look for. Uh, when uh, Philip and Kasia was going through the website, I'm sure that you also uh, paid attention to the section resources where we are gathering uh, not only the other inspirational sources of knowledge that, of course, we are encouraging you to dive deeper in to extend your knowledge, but also some organizations and startups and companies from our regions. So, of course, you are obviously also welcome to share with us uh, your ideas that we could update the space on the website and uh, keep it as uh, rich as possible. So, um, obviously, as I said, tackling the food waste and food, was, uh, food loss challenge uh, needs the work, come and join forces of different actors through all the food sector. And uh, that's why we as EIT Food, uh, with our mission, joined to this project because we really believe that uh, uh, transferring knowledge and uh, connecting different uh, actors is super important to uh, create sustainable future food system. So, but first of all, what is the EIT food? So we are the part of uh, European Institute of Innovation and Technology, and we are one of so-called knowledge and innovation communities. There are also different topics concentrated on different challenges. As you can see on the, on the slide, there is a EAT climate also present uh, in Latvia. Uh, there is EAT digital health or raw materials. And many, many more in the last year. Also, there was a created a new community, culture and creativity to uh, unite all Europe's creatives. So, EAT Food mission is to accelerate innovation to build a future fit food system that produces healthy and sustainable uh, food for all. And uh, how we can achieve that? Of course, to address the most important challenges in the food sector. And we spoke a lot about like the importance and impact of food waste. But if we look at it from different perspective, we will need to feed soon 10 billion of people. How do we do that? With, as Jakub said, change of the climate, 
the food prices rising, etc. Right now, over 2 billion of people are overweight and 800 million uh, 800 millions are undernourished. This is also the problem. Can we afford to lose this one third of all produced food in these circumstances? So, how to address this kind of challenges? Uh, we couldn't do that alone. As I highlighted uh, earlier, EIT Food is a community that brings together partners, over 100 of partners from different, like, uh, parts of the food value chain, but not only. There are academies, uh, universities, industry companies, startups, innovators. So we are connecting researchers, students, uh, investors, uh, industry players, and also engaging consumers to find the solutions and in general to accelerate uh, good ideas becoming the reality. So one of these challenges, of course, it's the switching from the traditional linear economy model, which is basically production, consumption, and then disposal, to more circular uh, models that will allow us to really use all the resources that we can effectively. And very big part of that, of course, is addressing the problem of the food waste and food loss. But how to do that? Of course, there is established uh, prioritization of the actions that we should do. And on the first position is prevention. And all what we try to do here also by creating the manifesto and fostering the dialogue and uh, making this uh, knowledge available, it's in the purpose of prevention, better planning, and of course, then, if not always it's possible to prevent uh, some surplus of size streams, it's a normal thing. But then you can think how to reuse it or uh, recycle. So what are the possible strategies in practice? I named here on the presentation a few of them. It's not, not all of them. But we had some discussions about improving shelf life. Of course, there are many innovative solutions I will show you some of from our community in a minute that are addressing this problem. Also one of the uh, important strategies is accurate, uh, providing accurate expiry labels. Right now we have a lot of confusion very often, especially among consumers, uh, if it comes to what is the difference be between uh, best use before and use by dates. And are those dates really accurate always? I think we all know that sometimes we can have products that are after the use by date and they are still good. So the other one is food stock rotation support. And it can be understood, of course, on many levels from the retailers to food service sector and also to consumer house, homes. Uh, and finally, use of the surplus and side streams. So let me please uh, show you some of the examples of the project, projects and later on also startups from our community. <clears throat> Talking about the prevention as a key element in uh, fighting with the food waste, we cannot like, miss education element. So EIT Food, together with the partners, uh, created free online course on the food waste loss, food waste and loss. And if you would like to uh, know, more, know more about the food waste impact and the ways to tackle it, not only in your kitchen, but also in your workplace or at the national level, you are welcome to uh, sign up and take part. This is a certified course, so you can uh, also uh, get the certificate after finalizing it. The other project that uh, actually we have done uh, 
in the past with some of the experts present here today, and I mean uh, Kasia and Jakub, uh, was uh, dedicated to the Polish Horeca sector. And it uh, is called Direction Restaurant of the Future. And the main aim for this project was to discover the challenges that the Horeca sector is facing after the pandemic and the barriers that are even bigger after these difficult times uh, in introducing more sustainable solutions or business models. After the qualitative survey and many interviews that we did not only with uh, chefs, restaurateurs, or uh, in general managers or restaurant Horeca establishment staff, but also with producers and retailers, uh, more broader, uh, let's say, food service sector, we identified main challenges and then in the co-creative groups, together with uh, Horeca leaders from Poland, we proposed few first steps in three areas, from the human resources to the storaging, packaging, and this materials to uh, food waste prevention and in general uh, food processing. So if anyone is interested about the tips and the uh, challenges, there is a QR code, you can download the report and discover. Another project uh, that is already live also from EIT Food Community, it's uh, about, it's called Guest Wasted and it's a modern marketplace that helps to connect different actors from the whole value chain, food value chain and helps to connect potential sellers with potential buyers. So if you have some surplus food or if you have some side streams and you don't know what to do with that, you can always find this new place uh, to try to find some potential buyers because of course we already highlighted many times uh, that for one player's waste can be a resource for the other. And that's why we always should look for the partners uh, to cooperate. And this platform is enabling that. So now switching to the startups from our community uh, that are addressing the food waste uh, or food loss uh, problem from different angles. First of uh, them, uh, former rising food star, uh, which is the EIT Food uh, Association of Scale-Ups, uh, Wasteless. It's a very interesting AI algorithm who helps retailers and uh, online groceries shops uh, introduce dynamic pricing. In general, as you can see here in the example, the, if the product is reaching the use-by date, the price is getting lower. And that encourages consumers uh, to choose the, those products. So we are not only having here uh, benefits on the two sides, from the producer, side, not producer or retailer side, but also from the consumer side, uh, who can save the money and no food gets wasted. The other solution, bio to coat, is just 100% uh, natural and edible coat that uh, is introduced on the foods and veggies, in general fresh produce, that helps to extend its shelf life. Another uh, quite already famous uh, scale up from our uh, community, it's Mimika. Mimika is proposing innovative labeling system. So no more confusion uh, between use by and uh, best before. Imagine that you can check by touch if the food inside the packaging is really still good for consumption. 
Yes, this is what Mimika is uh, proposing. For now, it's dedicated to dairy products, juices, and red meat. So if anything, any process started to, starts to go uh, in the, inside the packaging, then you can feel it on the label. The label will start to have bumps. And then you know that the fresh produce inside is getting spoiled. Otherwise, it's still good for consumption. And finally, the two startups from our community, one of them, Orbisk, was mentioned many times before, but also Ecobin. Uh, I will not maybe uh, introduce them too much because they will have opportunity to present them themselves and you will be also able to ask questions to them. From my side, Thank you for this opportunity. If you will have any questions, you can contact me. There is uh, my email address. And also, if you would like to learn more about EIT food projects and community partners and activities that we are doing in different countries, you can, of course, visit our website. Thank you. Thank you, Eva, for a really interesting um, presentation and about very concrete ideas, what we can use. Um, yes, you already put a nice bridge on the uh, EcoBean uh, company. Uh, and as you mentioned, there are already solutions and ideas, and it's nice to support them and get to know them. So we were going to have two companies uh, online pitch them, and we can ask questions. And the first one is EcoBean, who is turning waste uh, into resource, as you see on the... Uh, on, with the coffee and the uh, online pitch will, and will be done by Martin Kozerovsky. Uh, I hope you're online. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Can you yes, hear me? are you ready for your, let's say, eight minutes pitch <laughs> or five minutes pitch. Minute pitch? Maybe less. We will have right, more no. questions. Yes. Oof. I, I thought. Okay, I let's, thought say, let's say <laughs> the ele elevator speech one minute. <laughs> Okay, hello everyone. My name is Martin Kozerowski. I'm a uh, one more question. Can you see my uh, screen and presentation? Very well. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, so uh, I'm representing Ecobin as a, a startup company uh, which dealing with coffee waste. Our our goal is to uh, turn coffee waste is to, into sustainable chemicals. Uh, and our vision and goal is to help the whole coffee value chain decarbonize and in 2026 offset yearly more than one ton of uh, CO2. Uh, this is a huge problem. Uh, right now, we, together with Bureau Veritas, we calculating our model for our bio, first bioraffinery and will be growing and scaling up together with us. And thanks to that, uh, we have the um, proven, proven carbon footprint and proven savings, which we can uh, turn back with the carbons uh, credits uh, and replace it uh, into the once again into the market. Uh, the problem is huge, really huge. Uh, every uh, every year, uh, more than three million tons of spent coffee grounds is wasted uh, only in Europe, which is. is uh 30 percent of the global consumption uh what's the problem this is the no systemic solution scalable solution there are a couple of companies dealing with the coffee waste uh, locally uh the low end uh, level of the valorization most of the uh coffee waste right now going to landfill or uh uh insulation or composting sites but our goal is to change it uh, quickly from now on and uh, we are now implementing our uh, solution, turning coffee waste uh, into sustainable chemicals. Right now, we are dividing it uh, with uh, five fractions. First, uh, in one ongoing chemical process, we are achieving coffee oil, antioxidants, protein additives, lignin and PLA, which is fully biodegradable polymer. Two of, uh, two of those, the last two, we can simply uh, turn back into the uh, coffee value chain, into Coreca business uh, in, in different final application. The um, top, the first three are dedicated to the various industries, starting for the food industry, cosmetics, pharma, 
polymer or even petrochemical industries. Uh, for us, it's it's easy thanks to the cooperation with the uh, logistic solution, logistic partner, GLS company. Uh, we develop the, and implement special uh, solution. We have integration app and special dedicated boxes uh, when we can transport the, the waste around each country. Uh, our competitive mode is that, that we are very, very closely with the Warsaw University of Technology. Um, right now, um, university is our shareholder. They have still 6% of shares. Uh, no, we transform. Uh, we um, we we bought we bought exactly the uh, technology from the university. Uh, we own uh, three patents. Two more to come this year. Uh, what is worth to highlight more? Highlight more that our, one of our ch ch shareholder is a Czech company, Polish uh, Polish chemical group. Uh, mm, big big sales chemical company in this in this region uh, you can see the companies which are already our customers or we are in the process of proof of concept project and still i think more uh, 40 in the pipeline more to come uh, we scaling very quickly thanks to filling our our skill gaps uh, with the cooperation on on many fields working with market leaders, technology leaders uh, in, the, in their sectors. So uh, thanks to such a uh, initiative like uh, this manifesto, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll to participate and gain new, uh, new partners, new customers to cooperation and reduce the coffee waste footprint together. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know if you're here. You have applause here in audience. They're applauding you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your great work you're doing. I think you should connect the European Space Agency and, uh, and also provide them with your ideas. I think they're really marvelous. Uh, so, anyone else having questions here? This is a pitch. You should ask questions. Okay, I will ask then. How did you come up with this idea? I'm a big coffee drinker, so I think I'd come because I'll see the waste I'm, I'm get, you know, throwing out. Uh, the answer is obvious. That was a coincidence. Uh, I met uh, I met my co-founder, which is a guy from uh, from the coffee business, and uh, five years ago, him, uh, he came to me and said. Uh, Marcin, there will be a huge problem in upcoming years in the in the coffee industry. They are still they are starting to be responsible for the waste which are they which they are producing. So we need to find something and do this with the uh, great amount uh, of, of the waste. So the from 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 there uh, we're trying to find the best way for valorize the spent coffee grounds. We have one question from audience, Liga. Yeah, so as a startup, I suppose you've thought this through, right? Is it economically viable? I mean, with all the, you know, collecting, transporting and so on and extracting those materials at the end, are you able to also, you know, get to some profit? How does, how does that work? Did you hear uh, the question? Yes, that was, yeah, yes, that was, uh, of course, that, that was the big issue, that big challenge to, to doing something which is an environmental friendly and economically friendly. Uh, it was a must to to build this uh, to build this business to build this model. So yes, it's doable. Uh, otherwise, we don't we will not do not have the investor insight on uh, uh, on our cap table. Uh, we are now in the um, next uh, uh, financial round, so there's still interest in our uh, in our development. So uh, yes, mm, there is huge potential. For that moment, what can I say that from uh, one ton of spent coffee grounds, we are able to achieve 6,000 euro revenue. But we think it's uh, uh, we're going to achieve at the end 
20,000 tons from one single ton. That's our goal in the future. Thank you. You have some online questions as well. Uh, the first one is from Natalie, who asks, do you think the extraction of oil and byproducts from the coffee waste can be expanded towards other waste streams? Expanded to other waste streams? Uh, so do you mean uh, uh, different different sources of biomass? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's 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 possible. Of course, we have a lot of questions. Can you uh, can you treat the even tea waste uh, or different different source of biomass? Uh, yes, uh, it's possible. But of course, the um, the fraction will be different. The yield will be different. So the apparatus might be a little switch uh, for different source of the biomass. Thank you. We have also a question in the audience. Yeah, yeah. My, my question is, uh, are you ready to work with the Latvian market? Um, Would you be ready to work with Latvian markets? Yeah. That's the question. Uh, in in our in up, upcoming months, we will, we are entering to Germany. Uh, we'll have plan in, in plan pilot pilot in Turkey, also in Finland. Uh, yeah, let's uh, if if we have if we find the proper partner. Uh, to to start with, it's it's doable very quickly. As as I said, uh, we got uh, wherever G GLS is operating, it easy. It's it easier for us to start. Yes, thank you. I think you pitched uh, Echo Bean quite well. If you have this question, do we have uh, more questions in audience? All right. Thank you for your time. We have some more online questions, but we can do it after because we need to switch to our next pitch. Yeah, thank you for I was, joining. I, I'm switching to chat. Yes, thank you. Thank you for answering the chat questions as well. We have another company and uh, we have uh, Olaf van der Wien online uh, and he will tell about more um, innovative solutions uh, and it's on Orbisk. Hello, are you online? Hi. I am online. Yes, Thank very you. much so. Alive, Let online. Thank you for joining us. Sure, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Are you ready to uh, pitch your company? Very much so. Do you see my screen at all? Yes. Okay, perfect. Then, then uh, I'm all ready. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank, welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Olaf at Orbisk, and I want to tell you about brunch because that's what we see here. Don't we all love a good brunch? Uh, I, I know I certainly do. Um, and the thing that you see right here, unfortunately, is no longer brunch, it's waste. Uh, what you see right here is a picture that I took in a hotel buffet that I went to a while ago. Uh, this is me exiting the buffet, being the last guest there. And being the last guest there means that everything at that single moment turned into waste because nothing can be saved from this beautiful palais of good food. That's quite a disaster for the environment, uh, as we've also established here in the, in, the, in the talks before, but also one of the biggest opportunities this hotel has to uh, increase profit and increase sustainability. And that's exactly the opportunity that we're grasping at Orbisk. Zooming out, uh, we see that I have this, this zoom bar over. Can you, do you see that or no? Let's see if I can get that away. Yes. Okay, uh, so food waste in the food services is a one uh, is a two hundred billion dollar or euro a problem because a third of everything we produce is unfortunately wasted, which has also been established earlier today. Uh, we're talking about one point three billion tons annually, and fifteen percent of that sum is lost in the food services industry that we're talking about today. But then, food service is not one industry, I would argue. Food services, there's a couple of, of different uh, subsectors. We all always identify, we've got corporate catering. Uh, they, have the, they have very large volumes, but limited amount of waste because they serve the same amount of guests and the same type of guests every single day. Still, there's some five to 10% of everything being procured going to waste. Then we've got a la carte restaurants producing a little bit more and then events in particular me meeting lunches or conferences producing the highest levels of waste. Generally enough reason for change, I would say. But waste in the processes of these, uh, of these establishments is also not the same. Food waste comes from different places in your, uh, in your uh, organization. Uh, for one, there's peelings, cutting waste, shavings, your potato peels or banana peels. 
that's a necessary and inedible part of your waste. Um, uh, if you want to eat a banana, you need to lose the peel. But then what we focus on is your unprepared, your prepared and your served waste. Uh, waste becomes more expensive throughout this chain because, of course, not only have you procured these items, you've also spent labor into cooking them. And an average chef in a restaurant spends about an hour per day cooking for the waste bin. That's what we want to reduce. And as you can see right here, the perception is often that the served food, the plated food, that's where the food waste comes from. But 70% of the food actually never even reaches the table, never even reaches a plate, is never served or seen by your guests. Uh, so that's a big opportunity because that's just a general loss to anyone involved. So without further ado, let's see what we can do there because we are there to help the most important person in that process to me, the uh, chef. Uh, let's talk about a chef today. Marcin, are you a bit of a cook by any chance? Oh, you're, you're silent. Yes, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, I'm cooking a lot. Cool, well, then you're, you're the chef of the day. Uh, so uh, you will start your day when you run your restaurant, let's say you have one, by buying the goods you'll be needing for your guests, have them delivered to your door, start, you start preparing them for your guests and serve them to your guests. And unfortunately, as we've just seen, anything that uh, is then left over needs to go to waste. But Marcin, you love your food, right? You love cooking. Uh, and there, I haven't met a single person to date that loves to waste food. But you see what you're missing out here uh, and uh, because this loop, you start over again the next day. And that's exactly where we come in. We close this loop and help you optimize all the other steps along the way. And we do so by our technology and service, the Orbisk Food Waste Monitoring System. And as you can see here, we outfit the waste bin and your restaurant, any type of waste bin with our technology, being a weighing skill and a camera unit. And every time something is disposed, you quickly scan it and our AI computer vision models identify the type of food, the amount, the time and the reason for disposal of this food. It looks like uh, like this in actual situations. You throw away the food, we take a picture and our AI algorithms identify the type of foods we see on those pictures and we know the amount and the time and reason of disposal. And by tangible visualization of this data, we allow you to see where your recurring surplus is and how to address it in our user-friendly dashboard that is really aimed at aiding the chef in your everyday operations uh, about waste streams, ingredients, about the costs and the CO2 levels involved on a daily, weekly, monthly report, however you want to digest the data. It's an interactive dashboard really showing you where you can alter your process. So an average restaurant will pay us annually a service fee, including the education, the hardware, everything involved of 7,000 euros a market price, whereas an average restaurant wastes about 100,000 euros every single year, 100,000 euros. And we help them save up to 70% of that sum, saving them 70,000 euros on their food procurement. And that does not even include that one hour per day saved for chefs no longer having to cook for the waste bin whilst reducing 25 uh, tons of CO2 and 34 million liters of water use for food that was, wasn't, that you don't longer need to uh, procure and thus produce. Currently, we're in over 200 restaurants in different EU countries and even a couple of outside as far as India, working for some of the biggest chains in the industry and uh, working on US expansion. Um, so uh, a lot going on post-COVID. COVID's not been an easy time, of course, with the whole sector closed. But by now we are we're really ramping up, growing to about 600 locations end of year. We'd love to talk about uh, you know what we can do for you. But for now, I think I'm at time. So stop wasting your money and start saving the planet. And I'll be uh, I'll be ready for your questions. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Olaf. You have uh, also applause in the audience. Uh, I hear. Yes, thank there you. There are questions from Paula. Uh, can you help me with microphone? Yes. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Thank you so much for the pitch. Very interesting. Um, and so nice to see artificial intelligence being used on uh, food waste reduction. My question is, how accurate is the artificial intelligence? Um, thinking about the ingredients that you can't really see on on the plate that are mixed like like yeah lemon juice inside a sauce for example 
and so on. How, how yeah. accurate have you done any testing on this and have any figures about that? Yeah, absolutely. We do so continuously. So we, we uh, recognize food on a conceptual level uh, and, and that is super accurate. We have about a thousand ingredient labels in our database. Anything from uh, cut tomatoes to sauces to lasagna, cheesecake, oysters, what have you. Anything that will realistically go into a restaurant waste bin. Uh, that doesn't uh, mean to say that we can identify the amount of lemon juice in a sauce, obviously. In fact, we don't even know if it's a, a red sauce, if it's a pap uh, paprika sauce or a tomato sauce, because you, we can only visually inspect this. Nonetheless, that generally a restaurant will have only, say, one type of soup. They won't serve paprika soup and tomato soup at the same time. So they will know their recipes, and but the most predominant action they will take is start producing less soup. And that way they will also need less lemon juice and, and so forth. Um, so the ingredient list, we are connecting in some cases, uh, our first uh, menu engineering systems where we can uh, get the recipes in and, and really tell them on a more granular level. But in general, a chef doesn't need that to make changes in his process. Does that make sense? Thank you. We have also a question from Kagla, and she asks, what about identifying the food on a plate that customer did not finish? That's what we also do. But as I just outlined, that's only 30% of the problem. Uh, that doesn't mean to say it's neglectable, but yet then you're coming into the domain of the aesthetics of food being served and some people eating more than others. I'm not saying that doesn't mean it's a problem. In fact, it's, it's still a very a big problem and we do help restaurants address that too. Uh, and that's possible. You can you can scan plates. The, the the actual scan, I've got the device right here. If you scan something like a piece of fake salmon that I have right here, it's just scanning and powering away. That's how fast this works. So you can scan all the plates you uh, you do. But we do also have our first pilots running where we outfit a conveyor belt system, if you have one in your restaurant, where, where people um, dispose of their food. And, tr and automatically scan those. And in that case, you don't even need to um, uh, scan every individual plate because we'll do it for you. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Uh, are there more questions from audience? Yes, please. I do see the quick question about food on the plate Hi. not being recognizable because it's often mixed up, but that's not as often as you think. In almost all cases, you can identify the different foods on a plate. You'll be surprised. Okay. Some, sometimes you can't, but most cases you actually can. That's, that's, that's the reality we see. Hi. Uh, I was wondering, Hi. Um, why is it so expensive? 7,000 for a year, right? Yes, I think it's. I'll I'll, te I'll tell you. You save nice. about seventy. You'll save about seventy. Uh, but uh, to uh, to tell you how it's uh, why it's that price, you'll get the hardware. You'll get it delivered. We have a full coaching. Every single kitchen, we train how to leverage this data and actually get the savings, uh, um, uh, and 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 really reduce their food waste by by uh, uh, thirty to seventy thousand euros annually. And, um, and AI well, is just not a cheap solution. But, uh, but overall, our, our clients perceive it to be pretty cheap, actually. How long is the training? Three months. Three months. Oh, OK. So there's another question. Uh, what are you specifically doing for too good to go um, uh, calculation of their effect or? Am I, um, I am a user and very big fan of that company, but do you serve the TGTG selling point or the company itself? We we do uh, work with a lot of companies that work with Too Good To Go uh, as well. And in fact, we promote, uh, promote it as well because we work together with Too Good To Go. And in most cases, we can help restaurants to better see how much they can still uh, redistribute with the Too Good To Go app. Generally, they only uh, serve a minor amount of too good to go uh, uh, redistribution because they want to be on the safe side of things and they want to be sure that they can fill all those magic boxes. In most cases, they can actually redistribute more than they originally do through too good to go and we help them to make that assessment well. Uh, and as such, we can, uh, uh, we can do that. All right, Olaf, thank you. If there are no more questions from the audience, 
Thank you for introducing uh, your company. Uh, there is a question. Oh, sorry. There is a question uh, online. Let me see. Uh, sorry. Um. I see what happens when a menu changes. Um, for, <laughs> yes. for, a lot of, for a lot of our clients, the menus change every single day, actually. Uh, we work with, uh, with the corporate dining uh, uh, establishments, and they have a new menu every single day. But we don't need to know their menu because we recognize anything. We recognize anything that is conceptually food. Again, we recognize lasagna, we recognize sandwiches, fruits, vegetables. So even for clients that have a new menu every single day, they, they work with us because we don't need to know their menu in order to establish their, their food waste levels. Thank you all once again for joining us and for your time. I wish you the best luck with the new clients and getting this Thank out to the us. world. Yes. Um, so we heard some of nice solutions today from the companies as well. I mean, we have some practical ideas from the chefs. We have some practical ideas in the manifesto. But I would like you to, to take your phones out the last time and open the Slido. And answering the question, could you recommend any companies, organizations, resources, or good practices from your own region? Um, so we can add that to the manifesto. So it, at the day of the manifesto launching, we can also add your little fragment in, uh, in, our, um, in our manifesto website. That'll be really nice, I think. You can take a minute to think about this. I mean, you don't have to immediately answer. Yes, too good to go. Uh, too good to go. By the way, we don't have that one in Latvia. We have another application. I, I, I know that they tried to uh, concord the market as well. App, yes, that's Latvian one. Red, Red Poland, yes. Czech project Net Fork that focuses on food as a method in youth work. My grandmother, that's really nice. It's like this. Uh, Emily in Paris, the, the, the grandmother's cook, cooks and, and always grandmother involved in all this. Norwegian Food Bank. Startup and funding phase. I'm starting good waste reduction program in Ireland. Matwet from Norway. It's so nice that I can feel that those who are online are joining us as well. It's really nice to feel uh, your presence. As a hybrid event, it's hard because we don't know how many of you are there. Uh, I don't see your faces, but it's nice to feel you uh, here uh, at the poll. It's Cofeco. Nice. We will really um, take these ideas and try to uh, put them in the, the website and manifesto and all these uh, platforms. So it could be a start of... Uh, of a new ideas and maybe see that grows into a concrete project or idea. So there are two more people writing. Let's wait for an answer. Yes, Paula? Yes. Uh, hold up. Yes. Hello again. I just felt tempted to make a, a comment here because we have talked, uh, it was mentioned at least several times, this uh, topic with costs and it was brought up now with how expensive this uh, or not, you know, how the price of this uh, tool. And it was asked before if it costed money to reduce food waste. And I felt the need to, to emphasize that working on food waste reduction is working on saving money. So we really need to get that clear. It's not, it's, you don't, it, you know, you can go into the manifesto page and all of the tips there are completely free and you would be able to save money. So we need to start associating. Saving food is saving money. So just wanted to make sure it was clear. Thank you. There are more ideas. The Trezekne Academy of Technology Work could join. Also, Vakandi, Slow Food Reykjavik, Agenskalne Tirkus. It's an Agenskalne market in Riga. Uh, that's really nice. Yeah, why, why wouldn't markets join the fresh food? That's a good idea. Okay, I think we have a lot of good ideas. Thank you so much for joining us uh, from online and also those who are present. Today we learned a lot of new things. It doesn't cost money. It, we're actually reducing a, the, the, you know, the expenses. We have really nice manifesto we launched today. 
we have people who are willing around the world uh, to join us and uh, guess that hopefully it grows into something bigger. But before we go to the non-formal part, I would like to invite uh, Julia from Danish Culture Institute uh, in Riga and Eva from Poland, uh, you already know, to say some final words or maybe something about the future of the project. Well, we'll see. So, uh, hi again. I'm less nervous. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, so, I just wanted to say that it actually, for me today, uh, I can see that not only we have created this Great Taste Zero Waste Manifesto, which was like almost a year of hard work creating and thinking and, okay, how, how can we make a difference with this? But I can see today that we have already created a network around it because like standing in that corner or during the coffee break, people keep, kept coming to me and, you know, if you want to continue to do this and work on this, just come to me. I have some more ideas and then just get in touch with these people. We have some more ideas. So I'm really happy that uh, we have managed to create this network. And uh, yeah, there is a definitely a future into, into this project. And uh, yeah, we will continue on, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I totally agree. You know, like the third time in this <laughs> in this floor, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, what I wanted to highlight, I remember exactly two years ago when we came for the first time for the Great Day Zero Waste workshops and event that uh, Maya okay, was organizing from Nordic Council of Ministers. And I think for these two years, how many things we managed to do, and today launched this manifesto. And I totally agree that. Uh, we could do more. So also we are addressing it to you all. Please contact with us through the contact form on the manifesto webpage uh, with your ideas. And if you want to engage, uh, do that, please. Thank you for all the experts. Thank you, Eva, for hosting this event, for all the partners, embassies, and uh, Julia, last word. So uh, please help us to uh, in this fight against the food waste, because we have produced some food. So <laughs> uh, please join the, the small reception downstairs. And uh, those who are online, uh, please remember this is not the end, because now we just created the space where we can all connect. So I hope to see you uh, either uh, online there in Manifesto, maybe some other events. And uh, let's stay in touch, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for organizing. <laughs>